me to the wrong person.
hello. Hello, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Yo, what's up? Hi, hello. Galaxy coming in real quick. Galaxy, Galaxy being here early with that hello and getting that first. Getting that quick, quick first. Hello, hello, uh, Galaxy. Congratulations on getting that first redeemed. First of the stream. Every stream, guys, there's a first. Today just so happens to be our boy, Galaxy King. Um... Donovan got with a sub. Let's go. Thanks, Donovan. Two months. Wow. Got the months now. We got months now. That's crazy. Thank you for that sub. Thank you. Thank you. Mama Lisa in the building. Hello, Mama. How's it going? Hi, Mama. Um, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Um, oh, my goodness. I just realized my Discord is not on streamer mode. Give me one sec because you guys are going to be hearing that all. Stream long. Give me one sec. All right. Um. No, it was actually our, our good old friend, Mr. Seth FPS from uh, last episode, who just messaged me. Funny enough, uh, I thought he was getting a notification. I'm so sorry. Um, Donovan for the for the workbook. Remind me to, to talk to message back Seth as well. Um, after stream here. Um. Who else is here? I see Donovan's in here, of course. We were talking about CJ. Yo, what's up? What's good? What's popping? Tara, how's it going? Hello, hello. Um, the Miller Bros. What's up, the Miller Bros? I need a shorter name. Can I call you Miller? Is that good? I know you're in the Discord and we talked about it before, but uh, is the Bros good or like Bros or something like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sounds good. CJ said I'm good running run around the past hour, so finally get to relax. Exactly. So let's let's talk about this. So this past um I guess hour or two hours have been the most stressful. Just craziness. Um and that's no one's fault. This these things happen. It's it's it just one of those things. Um I'm blaming it on Mercury being in retrograde. <laughs> um, and our guest is nodding his head. Um, the, I would say, is we had a guest. Totally everything was going good. Ooh, we, are, we had an Aussie guest. I'm going to punch something here on my thing. I'm going to push that, that just train there. Um, we had a guest totally lined up. Everything was good. We were all excited. Um, some of you might even be here. Uh, might know Sharky. Uh, this morning, Sharky woke up with a terrible flu. Um, props to the guy. He got on a phone call with me. Um, and the poor guy looked like he'd been hit by a truck. Uh, Sharky, I hope you're not in here. I hope you're actually sleeping. Um, because man, you, you look like you need some rest. Um, and we hope everything's the best. Thank you, Rhodes. Welcome, Rhodes. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for the raid of one. I appreciate you. Um, but I will say is the, as for Sharky, he will be on here at some point. Unfortunately, today is not that day, just based off of everything um, that's happened today. However, the last two hours we've been scrambling. We didn't know what we were going to do. We were, we were thinking of maybe just chatting. However, last minute, we were able to pull together an amazing guest. Um, and so we're very, very excited for this one. Um, yeah, I hope Shark feels better as well, Mom. I, I totally agree. I just realized I don't have my stream paper in front of me. So give me one sec as I go grab it from my printer. Hold up. Alrighty, so today what we're talking about, um, one thing that's going to happen, and I mean, I haven't had any thought of it at all um, today, but um, one thing that I am going to, um, that's Scoot, right? Uh, um, one thing I'm going to be talking about uh, come probably the next couple of weeks on TikTok is I'm going to start uh, posting some different type of things. Cody, what's up? Good to see you. Um, we missed you this morning. We could have used the, <laughs> your help in this um, craziness that just happened. But good to see you, buddy. Uh, thanks for making the stream. Um, we have a... I'm going to start telling stories on TikTok. Um, so stories about my life. So you guys get to know who I am, what I'm all about. Um, and, and some things that have kind of made me who I am. So if you guys haven't already, exclamation mark TikTok. Um, we'll get you there. Sarah! How are you doing? Good to see you. 
congratulations by the way on the gift card when i saw that that's huge um thank you donovan for hitting the link for tiktok there the so yeah go follow tiktok this coming week there's gonna be some crazy videos going on there it's a lot of fun stuff um i i just realized too because of all this craziness i was gonna post a a tiktok before stream and i forgot um so you know what i might do during the break i will probably post it but you guys can go and see it during the break and then come back and come see it that's what i'll probably do but we'll see uh, I know, right? It was crazy. I was streaming when it happened, so Sam had to come and tell me. That's crazy, Sarah. That's awesome. Well, I'm, proud. I'm happy for you. I've, I've been, I've been waiting for you to win one of them. You, you, you deserved it. At least it was a big one too for you too. Um, another thing too, we have mod applications open right now. Uh, if you want to be part of this crazy team, um, who, by the way, I think all the mods are in here right now except for our boy Bardley. Um, by the way, if you've seen Bardley, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bartley's been a little bit MIA in the last couple of days. I think you went on vacation, but we don't know for sure. Um, but we'll find Bartley. Don't worry. It's all good. Um, the mods. The, there's three of you in here right now. Donovan, CJ, Tara. I didn't say this on the call because we were all crazy. But can you please all private message me separately your PayPal accounts? Uh, there will be something for the three of you by the end of today. Guaranteed for your help for the panic today. I appreciate it. All of you for all your help um please in discord private message me those um so i have those i i will keep it on file after that so we can use that love you too dara thank you um so yeah exclamation mark mod we'll get you to the mod application if you want to be a part of our team um i'd love for you guys to you know you're keeping it um i don't know about that uh, <laughs> now i'm just getting the smoke from the from the 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 mods here <laughs> from what i whooped you ass in in rl oh boy uh, i think i do donovan i don't know about that hello galaxy uh, again i said hello to you earlier i don't know if you saw it but i, I will say hello hello again and, and also bread i see bread's in here that's a fucking bread uh um and then the final thing speaking of rocket league we have a tournament coming up july 3rd we are giving away up to 500 dollars us uh, on Bren's Duo Derby Rocket League Tournament, uh, sponsored by Sleepy Wizard 404, uh, who will also be coming on this podcast later this month. Um, and yeah, the link is in the chat right now. Thanks, Donovan. And I think someone else did it too. It's DJ. Um, the link there has all the, for, or the, the command there has all the information you need. Plus, it also got the sign up link. Go sign up. Spaces are limited to 128 teams. It is a duo tournament. Get your buddy who's good at Rocket League. Game. Maybe get some friends who are terrible at Rocket League. Tell them to sign up, but just don't team up with them. Because <laughs> that prize pool starts at 100 bucks. Every 30 teams that joins, that increases another 100 bucks. So, I mean, get that pot up to $500. We have the money for it. The budget's there. I'd love to give you guys the money. Um, but don't forget to sign up. It's, that is a key part of this, is, is signing up. If you do not sign up, um, registration closes by June 30th. Keep in mind as well um miller i will say the average rank is platinum right now that is the average rank that we have in there um i don't have an exact number for teams yet so i, I cannot give out that number because i do not have it yet uh good <laughs> yeah so if you haven't signed up already you need to make sure you sign up get some friends in there maybe bring down that average a little bit <laughs> um but we'll definitely get to that however today Today we have something else to talk about. So if you guys haven't already, go check out those links that I just talked about. But um, today, right now, we're all here for one reason. And that is to meet our guest. Today's guest is a full-time tarot reader slash musician. He's also traveled around the country. I'm, I'm just, the United States is the country, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, on a spiritual journey starting in early 2020. Today, we hope to ask him deep questions to know where he comes from and how he sees life. Please help me welcome Joey Rodriguez, also known as Joey, to the conversation. Joey, hello. how's it going? Hello, 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 What's hello. Up? How are you? I'm doing fine. How about you there? Uh, you were you're sweating there. <laughs> oh, it's, been, it's been a crazy hour, two hours. Hour to two hours. It's you're just... doing great, Brent. Thank you, CJ. I needed that after this past two hours. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so the yeah. I, I've been I've been better. Let's just say that. Thank you, Sarah, for the love. Thank you, Donovan, <laughs> for the love. We appreciate all you guys. Um this is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be a really, really good one. I'm very excited for this one. Um under pressure, diamonds are created. And I think this is the best example for this stream. Uh, we were definitely under pressure on became the stream. Cody, thank you for sending the love to. Um, and we're going to make it happen. We're going to have a very, very fun um, stream here. And we've already got our first question for you too, which we'll, we'll ask in just one sec here. I'm just going to clean up my screen there a bit. Um, so on this podcast, there's a couple things. A couple things to keep in mind. A couple things to note. Uh, oh, not this again. Um, always, CJ, it seems like every every single um, stream, we have a question for our guests. Um, actually, we'll do that, and then we'll do two, choose one lie. I know it's last minute. Do you have a two choose one lie that you'd be open to share with us? Uh, I... You're going to have to give me a little bit on that one. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to give you a few minutes. We're gonna, I'm going to ask you this question. So just so you know, there's five questions that... Um, People can use channel points. So every time they watch the video for long enough, they can ask a, um, a question. Um, there's a limit of five per stream. They can ask five to me and five to you. Um, so you actually have a question already uh, from Donovan, who asks... Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> toilet paper, over or under? Over. Okay. If you're doing it under, you're a fucking psychopath. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> CJ, you hear that? <laughs> Puma, how's it going? Or should I call, should I call you D-Bliggity? I mean, <laughs> hi, Puma, how are you? Uh, yeah. We are all normal. I'm like, <laughs> oh, boy, Puma, I don't know if I can say that. Don't on stream, at least. Um, no, it's a CJ. CJ's an under, by the way. He's the he's a crazy one. We don't know about that one. Um, he's a little bit... Uh, we worry about him, Joey. I just... <laughs> CJ? Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, no, no, Puma is yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd be worried about him, too. <laughs> My man needs some, uh, he needs some help. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Cody, I'm not repeating that either, but hi, Cody. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so as far as that, do you think you have, have a two choose one liar? Do you want to, do you want to come back to it? We have a little bit. I'll get, I can probably push it a, one more segment, but we, it's up to you. Uh, I, I think I got, I think I got one. Okay. So keep in mind, these are things that ideally no one would know for the most part. But however, if you have certain things, I mean, Donovan and CJ, I know you know. Donovan's going to know them all. I'm going to be real with you. Okay, so Donovan, you need to stand out of it a little bit. Um, you can vote, though, Donovan, of course, in the poll. Vote on the poll. That's totally fine. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to ask you what your, your three things are. Then we will run a poll. Um, and the chat is going to kind of help me out. Let me know if they, what they think. And then I'm going to guess, um, myself at the end. And then after that, I will ask you to let us know and you will tell us that. And then we'll kind of go from there. So what is your two truths and a lie? Um, uh, let's see. I've died three times. Um, sure enough, crap, strong. I just <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm real strong. I've died three times. Um, actually it, Never mind. Um, I I just completely blanked out on the other two. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Um, I used to walk to school every day. Okay. And um, let's see. Um, and I've been playing music since I was three. Oh wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Scratch that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. I've been doing tarot since I've been since I was thirteen. Let's, tarot let's do since that one. thirteen. Okay, so Donovan, can you run the poll, please, for me? Let's hit it out of like if it, there's a two minutes option, that'd be perfect. Um, if not, three is fine too. But I think two would be perfect if we have it. Oh, thank you, Millers, for the for the follow. Appreciate you. Um, walking to school, caps, and CJ. CJ, you better not be spilling anything for me. Run that poll up though, please, if we can. Um donovan and then we'll we'll start kind of going on from here there we go perfect the poll is running here so number one is that um joey has died three times um and I'm, i i suppose been revived three times as well <laughs> um considering we're talking to you today, i hope so right um <laughs> um 
<laughs> number two is that you used to walk to school every single day. Is that from every, I, I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't ask the questions too deep, but what's called, is it every single day, I'm assuming? You said, you did say every day. Every single day. Okay. Every okay. single day. And then the third one is that you've been practicing tarot since you were 13. Um, and, f and for the audience and me, considering I am kind of meeting you as well, what, how old are you today right now? I'm 25. 25. Okay. So that would have been 12 years of tarot experience. So please throw your, um, guesses up in to what is the lie as Joey died three times. Has he, um, has he used to walk to school every single day or tarot since he was 13? I see nothing for number three. I see is today Joey's birthday. You worded that one weirdly. I did? No, it is not my birthday. <laughs> I don't know how I worded that, Cody, but I don't know. Um, we got a, a current tie right now for number one and number two being cap. So people are saying the possibly right now for that. So I need some more votes here. I need to see what you guys think. Put it in the poll. One, two, or three. Number one, died three times. Number two, you just walked to school every day. Or number three, Carol since 13. Oh, we got number two pulling out a little bit. Pulling off a little way. Um... Oh, damn. I just read Donovan's comment saying that you are a December baby like me. Yes, I am. That's... December 4th. Oh, crazy. That's really cool. Okay, so I'm the 27th. Well, that's awesome. All right. Okay. Uh, if you guys haven't voted already, hit that poll up, and then we are about to um, – I'm about to guess. Um, so just kind of a, a, a side note is right now we're, we're heavily push. well, I mean, we're pushing on two right now. Um, chat usually doesn't let me down. I will say that. So number two is the winner, saying that you used to walk to school every single day. I will say, um, I'm just, hmm, I'm kind of stuck on this one because I, I don't know if they're just bugging me in the fact that they're like, they're saying, oh, no, he didn't used to walk every single day or like literally someone might have just drove, went, like CJ or Donovan maybe drove you <laughs> to school like every day because I feel like that's part funny. of like, the Joker, but I don't know. Um, the died three times, I mean, I could see it a little bit. But it also, I'm excited to hear the story for that first off. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but you're also the fastest to say that one out. And then the tarot since 13, I know you've been practicing tarot for a while. I don't know how long you've been practicing it for. So that's the thing is, I know it's been a minute, but I don't know how long. So, um, you know what? I'm going to go with chat on this one. Um, is So I think the lie is that you used to walk to school every single day. Is that a lie or is that the truth? Your faith in your chat has uh, has helped you. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, yeah, that was good. Success there. Let's go. Big success. Big win. I jeez, I, I'm definitely over fifty percent now. Chat always right. Exactly. Chat is always right. <laughs> Trust the chat for sure, Tara. Uh, when has chat ever steered anyone wrong ever see, in history? That's true. I, mean, maybe. I don't think it's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, so now we need to hear the story here. So first off, the cap is the UC walk to school every single day. So what is the real story of that? Do you did was it just kind of random or like did you did you actually have a story? I was completely random, I'm gonna be honest with you, because I completely forgot my original line. I was like, uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all good. Um did did Donovan or CJ ever drive you to school or anything like that? Uh no Donovan did Donovan ever drive me home? I I'm sure he has before. Okay. Um, and then love the fireworks, uh, Puma. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, you, didn't purpose, you purposely didn't vote. I that's why I, that's why I put it. I thought it was. I thought Donovan that you did um, vote. That's why I, I picked that one. But let's go. Chats chats smarter than we thought they were. Um, so <laughs> died three times. Let's hear it. I'm very interested for this one. Oh, that's always fun. So um, trigger warning right now. We're gonna get real fucking dark. Okay. Um, so for first near death experience, it wasn't anything in my well. Most of these things weren't in my control. Um, when I was first born, uh, I completely like flatlined. I was like dead on arrival at first, and then they got the emergency doctor in. And by the time like he finally showed up, he was kind of just like, "What? Why did you fuckers call me in here? He's pink. Look, he's breathing." And they all looked behind and they're like, "Gotcha, motherfucker! You thought I was dead." <laughs> um, <laughs> second time uh i was underage drinking and i was on antipsychotics at the time and um drinking and psycho drugs do not fucking no. they don't mix. and um i passed out in the pool and they had to drag me out of it and i just according to them i had completely stopped breathing and Crazy. 
the the only things I remember are it was just completely black and I just saw these like white squares they they kind of looked uh they were just they were white lights but they were just like in a cube form I was just kind of not there at all and then <laughs> the thing that brought me back was that uh 20 minutes later mind you according to them I wasn't breathing um 20 minutes later I hear Joey it's your mother wake up oh wait hold on my headphones just died on me. Oh, no. So good. Whoop. Um, I hear my mother going, it's your mother, wake up. And I fucking sprang my ass up. I don't know where the fuck I was. I was just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and passed out again. And then they had to bring me back, too. And um, I ended up, like, trying to fight my girlfriend at the time's, like, older brother. Because I didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on. I was fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, you're saying, I, your, I, your, I, mo- your mom was totally like, you're like, no, I'm, you're not dying. I'm killing you. <laughs> basically. Basically, if, if you have a Hispanic mother, you fucking know. Um, <laughs> uh, like, that, that was the only thing that, like, brought me back. I remember. I just heard that voice. And I was just like, oh. I can't, I can't fucking go back. And then the last one that happened, like, I don't know if you can count this one because I will say I was on mushrooms. Okay. Um, this happened like last August. And um, we call this incident the Jacksonville dose because I was in a hotel room in Jacksonville. Okay. And um, I had a very potent strain of mushrooms called penis envy. <laughs> and um, glorious name. name. Yeah. Very fun name. And, um, mind you, all of 2020, like, I was psychonauting hardcore. Like, I, I was fucking doing mushroom trips maybe, like, every two weeks, every other week, acid trips, kind of sporadically throughout the months. Uh, going pretty hard, because it was just like, I'm in fucking quarantine. Might as well experiment with psychedelics, right? Um, and so it was my girlfriend and a friend of ours. She, re- she had, uh, got us the hotel room. And, um we got these like really strong mushrooms we were all super excited to do because like hey we have the fucking beach here go like chill out do whatever um and i'm thinking ah crap i did a mushroom trip the week before and for anyone who doesn't understand like how tolerance works for like mushrooms like um usually when you have a mushroom trip you have to like wait two weeks before your tolerance goes down otherwise if you go for another mushroom trip you're gonna have to do double the dose that you did before to get the same results and i was i had done a mushroom trip the week before and it it wasn't like a super hefty dose but it was like three and a half grams like your proper mushroom trip and um so i was just like shit i'm gonna have to take extra of this and a lot of the times like we usually have like oj with mushrooms because it makes the trip more intense and um it makes it kick in faster are you talking like orange juice yeah orange okay, juice okay. like usually just anything with like citrus okay. um and um so they had done their dose and this is before we decided hey we're gonna like start uh, measuring our quantities um for anyone who wants to do mushrooms get a fucking scale <laughs> um <laughs> And, um, Not condoned, so, but yes. <laughs> yeah, get a fucking scale. Don't be a dumbass. Um, and we start dosing. I think I I took about like like four four or five grams right off the bat. I was just like fucking hammering these mushrooms down, and like. I I gave it a good like two hour wait, and I was still like, I'm not feeling shit. So I go back to the bag of mushrooms and I instantly scarf at least like another three to four grams of these mushrooms and wait another hour. It's like, oh, I'm starting to feel a little bit, but I guess this is all of my mushroom trip, I guess, because like my tolerance is high. No, no, that was not the uh, that was not the case whatsoever. ever. And um, so I'd say we're like three, four hours in and visuals stop popping up uh because usually like during mushroom trips i like to just be outside listening to my music smoking cigars and like i'll I'll be doing like channeling like i do a lot of like in my spiritual practice i do a lot of like ancestral veneration so like i talk with 
my ancestors, that kind of stuff. And like mushrooms are very conducive for that. Okay. So that's usually like my jam when I'm doing mushrooms because it's not really about like having a like a party or anything mm -hmm. like that to me or more so not to sound like pretentious or anything but they're they're more of a medicine than like whereas like acid that's that's the fun drug we can that's the fun psychedelic and um so i was trying to do that and all of a sudden i was just like yo i gotta fucking puke so i ran my my ass off of the balcony and i puke my guts up and i didn't realize this um i found i found this out later on but um usually when you puke up mushrooms um that's like the second to last stage before like ego death and um i was having full-blown like hallucinations and shit there were eyes everywhere and i was just sitting there and i'm like those those eyes are always there aren't they like they, we just can't fucking see them they're like yeah we're we're always here we're always fucking watching i don't like big surprise we're fucking here and I start, like, I'm starting to forget, like, where I'm at. And, like, my, the visuals come on so fucking hard. And, like, I, my mind is teleporting in different fucking places that I've been. Like, I was in Jacksonville, Florida. They took me to fucking um, Poughkeepsie, New York. And they brought me to Arizona. That, and it just kept on shifting. And I was just like, yo, I can't fucking deal with this right now. Holy fucking shit. And uh, my girlfriend goes to see me. I'm in the bathroom on the floor. I'm just like, oh, I'm like heaving, forgetting how to breathe and everything. Um, she's asking me, like, do you remember your name? Do you, what, what day of the week is it? Like, what year is it? I'm just like, I, I can't, I'm not on this plane of existence right now. Like, I can hear you, but I, I can't fucking, like, actually talk to you. And all of a sudden, I, I hear... By the way, you're gonna fucking die right now. And I was just like, huh? Like, no, you're, you're gonna fucking die. And at that point, like, I'm eight to nine grams of mushrooms in. And so, for anyone that sounds like this escalated very quickly, it fucking did. Um, <laughs> it, it escalated quite quickly after that. And, um, I was just like, okay, but why? And they're just like, well, you've you've been here for so long. Don't you want to go back? Like, you you've struggled enough. Like, don't don't you want to go back? I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Let, let's go back. And in that stupor, like right before I like passed out, um, and I felt like an asshole when I told my my girlfriend this. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to cease living in about. 40 seconds, I love you. And then I realized what I said, and I was just like, I'm so sorry I just said that to you because you're on mushrooms right now. And then I didn't finish the fucking sentence and I passed out. And again, there's this wall of fucking lights. And it was just like, well, did you get what you wanted? I was kind of floating there like, what do you mean what I, got, what I wanted? And they're just like, you forgot again. Well, we're going to send you back now. And I was like, the fuck do you mean? And then I came to again, puked in the fucking toilet. And um, at that point, I was just like, babe, just get me my clonopin. We need to kill this trip right now. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I had bitten off way more than I could fucking chew. And my girlfriend, like, she was looking at me and she was pale as fuck. And she was like, I thought you were dead. You've been gone for like two minutes. That feels like two hours. And I thought you were dead you stopped breathing. I was like, sorry, I kind of have a tendency to do that on this plane. Jeez. But, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, that was a, that last one was a crazy story. I leave the best for the last, yeah. You know? <laughs> wow, okay. Um <laughs> Well. Yeah. Drugs kids. Be careful yeah. with them. <laughs> do them safely. Yeah. Do them fucking safely. Um and then the fu the final one. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna derail us because I'm sure we're gonna come back to this the, these these stories in a bit here. But I'm gonna derail yeah. us a little bit. Is you said tarot since thirteen? Yeah, I've been. Um, so that one's another story. Um, that one's not as fun or whimsical sounding. Um, 
when I was about 12, 13, my parents, uh, they divorced. Mind you, I was a very sheltered child. Um, so, like, this was like a bomb going off in my life as far as things go. Um, and then I had a very traumatic situation with my father that happened. And I'm not going to, like, go into full detail, but uh, my father tried to strangle me at one point. And extremely traumatic. Mm -hmm. And you'll see with a lot of, like, these spiritualist people, um, being so close to death, especially from someone who helped give you life, uh, it opens a portal to certain things. And after that had happened, uh, mind you, I had been going to Catholic school for fucking, like, nine years. And, um, like, I had already, like, fully wrote off the idea of God and shit like that. I was just like, if if there's a God that exists, like, he's no God of mine. Like, I'm 13. I didn't do anything to fucking deserve any of the things that are happening. If you're fucking listening, like, go fuck yourself. Um, just very standoffish to authority. Things like that. And then I started, like, seeing shit. Seeing, like, shadow people in my fucking, in my room at night. I was hearing voices, and the first thing my my head goes to is just like, "Oh God, I'm schizophrenic." Oh God, oh God, this is this is the fucking cherry on top. Like I'm gonna be, ha I'm gonna have to be committed to like a psych ward and shit like that. And so eventually, like, I grew the balls to like sit down with my mother and be like, "Yeah, this is what's happening. I think I'm schizophrenic." And she kind of just looked at me and laughed. And I was just like, "Why are you laughing at me? Like I'm fucking terrified right now." She was just like, you're not schizophrenic. Uh, you come from, like, a line of fucking Spanish witches. Like, this is what happens. And I was kind of sitting there like, you are full of shit. You're completely full of Like, this is not some fucking Sabrina the Teenage Witch bullshit. Because <laughs> I was fully like, you are so full of shit right now. You are in denial about your son's, like, mental health. Yeah. So much so that you are making something up so you don't have to commit me. Because, like, how is this going to look at look on you with the divorce and shit? Like, fully in denial about it. And she was, like, after a week of her trying to, like, convince me of that, she was just like, okay, fine. I'll show you. And she sits down and she pulls out a tarot deck. And she was just like... I'm going to tell you exactly what, what are on these cards. I, I'm going to tell you what's going on with you, and you don't have to say shit to me. I was like, okay, fair enough. And she does, and she, she kind of like, she held up her end of the bargain with it. <laughs> uh, she started just telling me all this shit about me that I didn't, like I hadn't told anyone about. And I was just, I was still super skeptical about it, but I was like, I was shook. And then she took me to her personal psychic. And that one was the fucking scariest shit. Because I sat down with her before she even touched a fucking card. She told me my whole life story. And I was just kind of like, okay, we, we have something here. We, we definitely fucking have something here. Okay, I, my interest is peaked. What is this? And um, from then on, like, I, I just got obsessed with them and just started, like, learning what it was about and things like that. Like, I started with a normal, like, uh, deck of playing cards, to which that's technically that's cardomancy, which is a different thing from tarot. Mm. Um, but that's how I started off. And then I got my first, like, complete 78 card deck. And from there, it was fucking history. I, as, as far as like tarot like i've never got into anything i know we have a lot of people in chat who are very very interested in um tarot and also practice it some people uh practice it some people just are interested in it as as a whole um yeah like i, know, I don't know if sarah if St sarah's in, still in here but i know sarah in the past um uh, uh did it and we also have a question too about tarot uh tarot cards and readings and things like that from tara um said uh what's your to, this is the question to you by the way is what is your favorite tarot or oracle deck uh my favorite deck as of right now is um shit i have it near me um i have my tarot bag 
the Cosmic Tarot. Well, it's a toss-up between that and a friend of mine last year gifted me this really nice deck. I'm actually, I'm going to change my answer. It's it's this deck I'm about to show you. Okay. I'm so proud of it. It's not even funny. And it was just given to me as a fucking gift on a whim. It's the Salvador Dali deck. Okay. And it's all the, all of the images were painted by him and whatnot. And it was thrown into a tarot deck. And the cool thing about this tarot deck is the, the thing with tarot is that all of the cards are synchronized with like zodiac energy so like you have the major arcana which um there is a zodiac card for all of them like for example like the chariot is usually um cancer's card and the cool thing about this deck is that it takes all of those zodiac um energies and completely shuffles them and changes the the cards that they're associated with so this is a fun deck to play with it's also a very expensive deck to buy because it's like a collector's item and shit and like i think like the newest printing of this is like 150 dollars and it's a giant box set that i have and it comes with this huge fucking book but that's that's my answer the salvador dali deck is my favorite right now Good friend there to, to hook you up with that oh, amazing friend <laughs> amazing friend uh, yeah i know you have a couple people saying that uh that is their dream decks that they that they also wanted that as well tara and uh breadcrumb are saying both of both of them want would love to have those so i know that's um uh, i got a i have got a reading with that deck it's so amazing oh that's awesome Brett. that's really cool um yeah, the deck is insane. <laughs> yeah yeah and i've never i don't think i've ever personally had um a tarot reading done on me i don't think I could be wrong, um, but it's definitely fascinating. It's a definitely interesting. Um, it's an interesting kind of concept, and especially like with your story of how you said you kind of were kind of grew up as a total kind of I guess non-believer would be the best way to put it. Uh, yeah. Until you were kind of shown in first hand, you're like, oh my goodness, these are things I've never told anyone. Um, like I think there's definitely a. It's definitely f things that you can um get into and interested in and i think and you've from what you've kind of seen is you're very passionate about it which is awesome and it it, it, it interests me even more to kind of learn more about it seeing someone as you so interested in it and um kind of like almost like a love of it which is kind of crazy to me it's it was just really yeah. cool for sure yeah yeah um the tarot because like i've only been doing this professionally for like the last year mm -hmm. but like i've been like doing tarot for, since i was 13 and just ever since it giving me the ability to just quit a fucking normal job like and just do whatever the fuck i want like it's a privilege you know and um i am forever in debt to tarot it's done a lot for me yeah um, I would say also too. So just kind of to, to plug you a little bit there, I saw Cody earlier. You put in the exclamation mark guest. If you guys have at any point exclamation mark guest, I'll throw it up there right now. Um, also too, a couple things I forgot to actually mention because of how crazy today's stream is. I actually was able to luckily go and purchase myself a lovely stream deck. <laughs> but I haven't, I've totally forgot about saying anything to you guys about it because of how crazy today has been. Um, but another thing just too is 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 there a um, is there anywhere that, like, if let's say someone from the chat wanted to get a reading from you done, where would they go about um, finding you? How could they find you? Aside, is it with Instagram the best place, or is there another place we could find you? Um, check me on my personal Instagram page because on there in my bio mm -hmm. is the link to my um, tarot page, and the, just DM me on there because I, I was gonna set up a whole website and thing and then like depression happened and depression is a bitch it is, um, it is. yeah so i actually have to like go and set that shit up again like get my domain back and uh get my website running but yeah if you want to get a tarot reading from me just find me um find my personal page on here through the chat or whatever and then you can see on my bio it's cosmonaut tarot and I'll answer your DMs, whatever you want. I'll, we can book a reading, whatever. <laughs> um, someone's, at, uh, sorry, Brett is asking, do you do Zoom calls for those readings? Yes. Yes, usually I'll, I'll do a video call and stuff. Okay. I'd rather be there in person, but you know. Of course. <laughs> All right, Breadcrumb said they are going to hit you up here. Uh, so there you go. At least we can, hopefully you can get some, some things going on here. It's, I guess it's very interesting. I think today, it was, as I said, it was, it's, 
it's a guess that was kind of last minute, but um, we definitely didn't didn't um, cheap out here on, uh, <laughs> on this guess by any means. <laughs> Justin T, thank you for sending love. We appreciate that. Um, and also, Tara said that they are hitting you up as well. So, got a got a couple got a couple hopefully new clients for you here after this this stream. Oh, yeah. We hope for especially for how much you've helped us last minute here. It's uh, if we can support you in some sort of way, if you supporting us in the stream, I mean, that's that's what this is all about. Um, we usually do a segment on here called Quick Questions. Unfortunately, okay. today, due to time, we're probably going to time wash that. Um, it is usually just kind of a warm up for answering questions. However, I don't think you need a warm up. You seem very warm and ready to go. <laughs> right? I, I've shared one of the most intimate things I've ever like happened to me, which was just like dying on mushrooms. <laughs> I, I think we're I think we're warmed up. <laughs> right, exactly. So I think we're good as well. So, however, I'm going to ask you another question. And, and I mean, we've, you've given us a lot already. So, I mean, if you want to include parts of it, that's totally fine too. Uh, if you do not, uh, if you if you want to like keep certain parts out and just change it to a little bit, that's totally fine too. I know you got a whole thing. We haven't even talked about your music. Like mm -hmm. what do you put in the chat? We haven't we haven't even touched on that yet. So we got a lot to talk. <laughs> we got a lot to unpack here. Um, so one thing I would one of the questions here that I we usually ask is, um, so we obviously we talked already about uh, tarot and kind of what made you want to uh, begin tarot. Um, what made you want to begin music and getting into music and artistry like that? Also, too, um, by the way, sir, before you answer that question, too, we have a hydrate from Justin T. So we got to both take a sip of our, our drinks there. I saw you got the Arizona tea there. I'll hydrate up, and then you can tell us um, about the about that story of how you came to be with music. Yeah. Um. So you guys remember how I just said my, my father strangled me, right? <laughs> well, ironically enough, like, what the other thing that is, like, if I didn't, do like anything spiritual or anything i i'd just be doing music like music is such a giant part of my life but now i just they're both intertwined they i can't have one without the other but funny enough my father is the reason why i got into music my father in video games okay um so this was back when i was like 11 or 12 um my dad's a big like classic rock guy like he had a fucking whole collection of vinyls and everything like some really cool vinyls mm -hmm. and um he'd always try to get me into his music and i was just i was just ne never really interested in music i didn't give a fuck um until one day like he he called me down to his like man cave and to be like invited into his man cave was a big fucking deal okay. and um so he calls me down and he's just like, I want you to sit here and watch this with me. And it's the rock and roll hall of fame. And they're doing a tribute to George Harrison and they have everybody and their mother doing this fucking tribute. You have like Tom Petty singing, but the, the real star of that show is fucking Prince. Okay. And yeah. So like they start playing while my guitar gently weeps and prince just rips this fucking solo and i'm sitting there and like i have like, tears in my eyes and i'm like i don't know what the fuck this is but i want to do it <laughs> i like i don't know shit about any of this i want to do like i want to i want to do that i want to do that real bad <laughs> and so he started showing me like some of his like record collection he had a huge like he had a vinyl collection, he had a cassette collection, and then he had a huge CD selection, too. So, like, I started getting... He showed me Rush and, like, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and shit like that. Mm. And I was just fucking hooked on this shit. And um, I kept on, like, volleying this idea. I was just like, I want a guitar. Dad, I want a guitar. Just like, I want you to have a guitar. But you're a little young right now. I'm like, I'm, that's... Let's wait on that. And then finally, it took my parents divorcing and my parents starting to like volley for my love. And like my father's way of doing that was like buying me shit. And so like he went half on like an acoustic guitar. And then like, I think they had some arrangement with the fucking guitar teacher or whatnot. And um, I started playing guitar at 13 as well. <laughs> and yeah i went to like a month worth of lessons and then 
was having complete mental fucking breakdowns in school and from there i was just like, i i can't do lessons like i'll keep playing the guitar but i can't fucking do lessons mm-hmm. like i'm i'm having the panic panic attacks and like i'm sobbing my eyes out before i have a guitar lesson i don't want this fucking random guy who's teaching me guitar to be like you, you okay kid <laughs> like it was just a very vulnerable spot for me mm. being like 13 and in that situation but like music again not to be cliche or anything but music is a lot of the reason why i'm still fucking standing you know and then like later on in high school i met up with my friends um one of them being donovan <laughs> <laughs> and um within our friend group um we had Winston, Cooper, and Michael, and they were part of the band and shit. And they had tried to recruit me, like, earlier in that year, and then, like, I blew them off because, like, they showed me a live of them playing at, like, our school's Battle of the Band, and I was sitting there, I was just like, I can't fucking play with those guys. Those guys are real musicians. I'm just the fucking, this idiot that plays. Like, I look up guitar tabs and shit. Like, I can't even play a full song on my guitar. And then, like, this, I remember they got another guy and I remember seeing them like do practices and shit. And I was like, damn, I wish I, I wish I would have fucking joined up with them. And then that guy left and um, they came back to me and they were like, yo, can you just like show up to the like, try out, please? Like we're fucking desperate here. And they took me in fully knowing like I was rough around the edges. Like I didn't know how to play guitar until I, I actually started playing with them. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of how I got into music. Ironically enough, it was my dad. That and Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero was the other thing. Good like I, I'd, I'd play that game for fucking hours, and I'd be like standing there. I'm like, this is really fun. I feel like we could be doing this better, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, oh yeah, you were supposed to be doing it for real, right? That's cra- that's crazy. That's pretty awesome. Um, that, yeah, that's a really cool story about how like it kind of kind of almost well, full circle is the word but in a sense it almost like it was it's it's all connect connected because you met donovan through music it, and you met like you know, your friends and you like the people who you went to obviously the people that you went to school with and they try to push you and i think it's good sometimes you need a push to, to get to that creative point where it makes you super happy and super like something you really want to do but sometimes it takes that one person to be like do it like you need to yeah. do this. you might not be the best at it that's totally fine I think a lot of creators can can vibe with that is you don't have to be the best at really anything okay. but it does not you... fucking matter. Yeah. it doesn't matter just fucking throw yourself at these walls like fucking sound like a maniac but just fucking do it and i guarantee you eventually like after a month after two months after three months you're gonna start hearing something and it's just gonna be like yeah, that's your inner voice. Like, you just need to sculpt it. You need to find it and, like, just pay tribute to that. And eventually, something will come. And I think uh, a good kind of, like, notion to this is is today exactly is kind of a good thing. I was about an hour or, well, now, two hours ago, I had no guest whatsoever. I mean, well, we yeah. did, but they had, to, they had to cancel. And I looked at uh, the team of people that I've met online, people that are just just out of the kindness of their hearts decided to come and help me and um they grouped up and i think every single one of them pulled at least one person that would had this, a bit of an interest um and now look like we have we have a, we have a stream today <laughs> with you um with an amazing guest because of um just kind of believing in something and and and, and others believing in in me which is weird and crazy yeah. to me like um I had a conversation with someone else who was who was um interested in coming on as well and i said to him I was like, i'm just like thank you so much for like even your time and you don't even know me and same to you you don't even know me i'm just some random kid on the internet for all you know um yeah, no, uh, and- donovan vouched for you and that's all you need if donovan like donovan has been one of my closest friends if not my closest friend since high school so like if he vouches for you, yeah, we're already friends. Like, yeah. well, Donovan, <laughs> like it or not, we're friends now. Have fun with that. <laughs> well, Don- Donovan, I appreciate you vouching for me. As as you guys all know, Donovan's Donovan is a great dude. He saves my ass a lot of the time. Um, so thank you, Donovan. Sending a lot of love in the chat. A lot of love to you back. Also, to just on Donovan. the um the chat going down here, Mom, I see that you are following Joey on Instagram now. That's great. Um, have a good sleep. I I I hope you'll watch this vod later, as you said. Uh, if you do, hi mom. 
Um, and Tara, uh, thanks for the lurk. We appreciate that. Uh, we hope to see you in a bit soon. Um, we're gonna ask one more question. Actually, you know what? We'll ask a couple more, maybe a couple more questions, depending on the time here. Uh, we usually hit a break around the hour mark. We're closing in here. Um, but if you were to give a TLDR, a very short version of your life, what would what would it be? What would be the TLDR version of your life? Um, did Catholic school? Don't recommend it. Did music? That was cool. Um, fucking, there's this giant void during my teenage years until I was like 23, where I was extremely suicidal. Not the greatest time in my life. I'm not gonna lie. And 24, I got my heart broken and decided to fucking go nuts and say fuck it to everything and just do all the things that everybody was telling me not to fucking do in the first place. And um, now I'm here happier than fucking ever. Like that's that. that's the real. Do what your heart do what your heart says. Do whatever the fuck you want. Like, please don't let anyone fucking tell you you can't do something. They're a fucking liar. They're projecting their shit at you. Um, they're seeing a part of themselves that they may not express, and they're jealous of you. They're jealous, like, not to make it sound like, oh, this narcissistic thing, but it's just like a lot of people don't have the balls to just go for the thing that they want. And then they're fucking miserable for the rest of their lives because they didn't try. Just try. And it says, hey, not everyone told you not to do things. I was always pushing you to do what makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Donovan. Donovan was always just like, hey, man, just as long as you're okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it also helps to have amazing friends. So true. It's always good to have you someone know, in your Donovan career. has seen me at all of my fucking stages, like from like 15 to now. So we've been friends for the last 10 fucking years. He knows me pretty damn well. He's seen all of the different colors that I've worn, you know. Um, well, I can see why you guys have been vibing. You definitely have that that lovable energy, as uh, Breadcrumb said. I love this dude and his energy. I agree. Um, I'm, I'm definitely. I love you, Breadcrumb. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we we all love you, Breadcrumb. Um, let's see here. We um. I'm interested. I want to kind of. I want to go. Amazing energy, says Tara. Um, I want to kind of break down the happiness thing a little bit. So one of the questions we usually ask and sometimes ask, and I'm I'm going to throw it into you as well is how happy are you right now? I have not been this happy in a very long time. Okay. Um, I'd say like six, seven months ago, I was really fucking struggling. I wasn't getting tarot readings. Um, I, I felt very, like, I was extremely depressed. I felt very, like, cut off from my friends in New York. I, also, during the pandemic, I decided I was going to up and leave, date someone down in fucking Florida and shit, and just uproot my life, because fuck it, why not? Um, the world is ending anyways, might as well fucking try something. And, uh, I just felt really cut off. Um, there's a language barrier between me and my grandparents. That's who I like live with. So like there, there was a lot of miscommunicating going on there, but like now I'm, I'm feeling fucking great. You know, I just met a bunch of new people. I'm going to be, I have a big like summer plan for myself. I'm going to be recording a lot of music with some really cool people in New York city this summer. I'm going to be recording more co podcast content and shit like that. And j it just kind of feels like m I'm back on top of the wheel. If that makes sense. Awesome. But, but when it comes to happiness, it's just like happiness is a choice. First and foremost, you know, you have to choose like, do I want to fucking strive for happiness? Because you don't just say, yes, I want to be happy, and that's it. Like, no, there, there's a lot of things that are in the fucking way of that shit. Like, to be happy is, like, really dealing with your own fucking shit. Like, can you be honest with yourself? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it, it's not an easy fix by any means, but no, it's definitely, it's definitely okay. something that you can... You can yeah, in a sense, there is, there is parts of it that you can choose per se and yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that it's like it's, it's push for happiness and what makes you happy is it will will always come on top um if you and then keep it on happy if you, this this is gonna this is gonna this is gonna change up a little bit because um you seem like a type that isn't too materialistic you seem like you kind of get joys in the little things if you will um not to sound too cliche um mm. but if you were given three things thank you Appreciate you, Livewire. I haven't seen that name in a minute. Thank you, Cody, for 
for per, um, putting some donations, ten dollar donation to dinner tonight. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you. I actually haven't eaten. I've eaten breakfast, and that's about it. A muffin. So thank you, Cody. Um, but going back to the question here is, if you were given three things that make you happy, and they have to be materialistic items, what would those three things be? Um, I want a fucking big ass house in the middle of nowhere where I can house a bunch of fucking people whenever the fuck they just want to come over. That'd be fucking amazing. Okay, so uh, that'd be the first thing. I like guess shelter for for ho the homies or anyone. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, this one's gonna be a bit selfish because I I am who I am, but like I I would love to have inside of that house a nice fucking studio setup would be fucking amazing. That's cool. Um, and the third thing, I'd say like I, I'd want like a really nice like RV or camper and shit, so I can just kind of like up and leave wherever the fuck I want and just pick up whoever or whatever friends who want to fucking just travel all around and shit and just go do that shit you know oh, okay That's nothing awesome. too like insane all right i like that so a, a house for the homies studio yeah. for recording um and then an rv go pick up the homies exactly i see, I see a bit of a theme me. all the homies exactly all the homies man <laughs> exactly um i think actually you know what i'm gonna hit you with one more because you, you seem like a man of, of many talents, and this one caught my eyes. I looked down at, at the questions on my sheet here. Um, and then we're going to hit a quick break. Um, just remember, in that break, I'm going to be posting a TikTok. I will talk about this in just a moment as well uh, that you guys are not going to want to miss. Uh, I had Donovan uh, dying laughing when my, my, we posted it, uh, or when I showed him it this morning. So we'll, I'll, I'll post that on the thing there too. Um, however, do you have... Any secret hobbies or skills that most people would not know about? Do I? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I think, like, music and tarot were those things. Like, I, like, I also, like, to be a little bit more honest, like, I, I consider myself a spiritual practitioner. Like, I'm not just a tarot reader. Like... Um, for lack of a better term, so we don't like have to get into this like nuanced conversation. Like, uh, I'm a witch. Let's just play with that. All right. So like, I do a lot of like, I do like fucking candle sessions, shit like that for people. Like, usually just my friends and whatnot. Like, if I see something like that's like bothering them and stuff, I'll do like a road opening thing. But like, as for like little hobbies, I really don't like spiritual <laughs> spirituality and fucking music's really like my full-time thing like i don't i don't really have anything crazy i do like you know gear that goes with it like i have this big ass pedal board which has a bunch of different effects units on there and makes the guitar sound different like that's my fucking like i'm a gear nerd so like if that that's probably the closest thing to a, like a secret hobby or anything is like i, I like gear that's cool that's that's good that works yeah for sure Alrighty. Well, we're going to hit a quick break. Um, for the ones that are in here, Terrapin says, which is in the chat, say, awa, awa. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, the, for the ones that are hanging out here, um, we're going to hit a quick little break. Um, the, we're going to be posting a TikTok on the break. I'm going to post it up. As soon as I hit the thing, I will go onto my phone, I'm going to post it up, and then I will put exclamation mark TikTok in the thing so you guys know it's posted. When you see exclamation mark TikTok, go and hit that video up. It's a good one. It's also a promo for what's going to be coming on my TikTok as well as maybe even the streams, question mark. So um, you guys might be getting a kind of a little bit of an early access and uh, kind of knowing about before other people. But do not forget to come back, exclamation mark guest, um, if you have already seen that, if you want to, if you see that TikTok and then you want to come back and go and follow all of uh, Joey's uh, or his Instagram, go check out his uh, things for Tarot through his link in his bio. And as well as the $500 Rocket League tournament that we have coming up on July 3rd. Um, you can do exclamation mark tourney. We'll get you that link as well. Um, and also, when we come back, I know they've been deep questions already, but we're going to ask deeper questions, believe it or not, once uh, we come back with Joey. Um, we will be right back, and we will see you guys in a moment. to appear as very calm just very zen but inside i'm like what the beep is beep 
Mr. Deepity Deepity happening here? So. My own mod. I've been asking streamers what's the best advice they've ever received. And here's what they told me. What is the single best piece of advice I've ever received? Somebody just put like life into a bigger perspective for me. So they're like, listen, your 20s are a very small part of your life. Risk a lot of things in order to make the rest of your life better. So my thing was like, I'm just going to try a bunch of shit, risk a bunch of money even. Like I have a load of money into crypto. It's doing great now. I'm happy about that. Um, that's a big risk that I probably wouldn't take if I had a family and children and things like that. But in my 20s, I can do it. I can lose all my money tomorrow and I have a job. I'll be fine. But if I have kids, I can't be risking shit like that. So just take risks while you're young. It's the biggest, best piece of advice I've ever received. So don't have kids. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who or what inspires you? I'll start with my dad. My dad worked a lot. He's still working a lot right now. I have always looked up to my father ever since I was a little baby boy. When I was in kindergarten, you would go up and you would talk in front of all the parents and you would say what you wanted to be when you grew up. All these kids are like, you know, I want to be a policeman. I want to be a firefighter. Uh, I want to be a doctor. The teacher asked me what I wanted to be. And at first I said, I wanted to be like a firefighter or something. And my teacher was like, we have too many of those. You can't do that. I was like, oh shit. My four-year-old brain, completely blown. I had never had my ego just taken down like that. I had to think about who did I look up to? Of course, the first man that comes in my head, my father. I go up in front of everybody and I say, everyone's like, I want to be a policeman, a firefighter. I say, I want to be a dad. Aww. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Recently, I've been asking streamers, what three items would you bring to the register if you were trying to make a cashier uncomfortable? Here's what they said. Uh, what three items would I bring to the register to make someone uncomfortable? Condoms, baby food, and icy hot. <laughs> what three yeah. items would you bring to the register if you wanted to make the cashier at the grocery store uncomfortable? One carrot, a, a pack of condoms, and um, lube. Extra large, yeah. Well, we go be able to fit another carrot. Sounds like a fun night alone. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. I say. Yeah, sure. What three items would you bring to the cashier at a grocery store if you wanted to make a cashier uncomfortable? Hemorrhoids cream, zucchini. Oh, this is touching close to home. <laughs> <laughs> and applesauce. <laughs> the worst dessert possible. Just made me up. What does love mean to you? To understand and to value each other's time. Not just that, but also understand the time that you yourself are given. Because there's one thing about understanding someone else's time, but there's also one thing about like understanding your own time. Love is very time-consuming and also there's a lot of growth. You have to water it like a plant. If you don't water the plant, the plant's gonna die. <laughs> it's your choice on whether you yourself have the patience to water that with love it's kind of just like if you put too much water it can die if you put too little water uh, you have to have like a 50 50 thing with it love is a lot of things uh, we're all the same and until we start seeing each other as the same um, there are a lot of problems that cause great ill on the planet that we won't be able to overcome unless we get over that one uh, the stigma of being different than one another or we might be, uh, we might have uniqueness. Like I might have things that you don't have because I'm me. Just like you have things that you have that I don't have because I'm not you, I'm not Brent. <laughs> we are still like, we're still the same. You're a human being and I'm a human being and we're a part of the human system. And nobody is isolated. Nobody's better than anybody else. Nobody is worse than anybody else. We all have something to offer that is 100% uniquely ours. And that is our individual life. Nobody walks up my feet for me. Nobody walks your feet for you. So yeah, the stigma of difference.
What current trend makes no sense to you? <laughs> there was a trend where you put your nuts in soy sauce. Okay, yes. <laughs> and orange juice, and apparently you could taste it. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say that I put my nuts in soy sauce, but I may have. <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, I yeah, couldn't taste it. Really, really weird. I was expecting to just get a, you know a mouthful of flavor, dude. But no, just yeah, nothing, dude. Nothing. A bit underwhelming. Is that against t Twitch TOS to do that on stream? <laughs> well, let's look at the, both of us how we're standing right now. Like, what if like just we just squat? Uh, oh, yeah. Like, nothing's wrong with squatting on stream, right? Yeah, if you're not like pulling your nuts out, I could just like do a little like like a little curtsy. You know? <laughs> get my nuts in the soy sauce, dude. Give them a little bath. Welcome to Factor yeah, Cap. <laughs> Recently, I've been asking streamers, toilet paper, over or under? And here's what they said. Toilet paper over or under? Over. One billion percent. It's just so much easier. Why the fuck would it be under? Why? Did, why? Toilet paper over or under? I just wash my ass with my hands, bro. Easy. Don't have to waste your toilet paper. Very eco-friendly. All you gotta do is have a bucket with some soap water, dip your hand in that bitch. Wipe your ass, bro, you know what I mean? For toilet paper over or under, I usually put it in, in the butthole. No, it's over for sure. Over 100%. Toilet paper no, I do over or under, over. And if you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> toilet paper over or under. That's the most important question. What did you just fucking say? Over. Dead to me. Under. Don't fucking play with me. Under. If you put it under, you could just rip across. You put it over, you gotta like be careful or the whole roll's gonna end up on the fucking floor. No way. Are people gonna understand? Are people gonna watch? Does anyone care? You must be crazy. I'm crazy for doing this. No one's gonna watch this. Gonna understand? Who cares? Think of it. I just don't do it. Must be crazy. Does anyone care? Who cares? What if it doesn't work? Why? Are people Why? Gonna watch? Crazy Why? No one's gonna watch Why? This. Welcome to my Twitch stream. What life-changing event have you experienced? We are back. What's up? What's up? So I have a little bit of an update on the TikTok. <laughs> I, I don't know for sure, because I've never, I don't think I've ever had this happen before. But I'm pretty sure the TikTok I put under review is there is that. I, I don't, I assume. Uh, it was a bit edgy. I didn't think it was that edgy, but apparently it was. <laughs> I do have it saved. So, I mean, if I have to share it somewhere else, I guess I could. But we'll see. Um, so keep on the lookout. I'm not have mercy on you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wild, I know, right? It is... <laughs> It's hilarious. It's it's based off of a trend that's going around right now, and it's it's a bit it's a bit spicy, if you will. Um, <laughs> but it's yeah, no. I, I really hope you guys can see it. I hope it posts throughout the the stream here, because um, it is so funny. But I, I have a I have a weird feeling that unfortunately TikTok might just pop that off. If anyone knows how TikTok puts the review stage, please let me know. I don't know if it just doesn't say anything because it didn't say anything to me at all. It was just completely. Um, which kind of would I suck. think they use an algorithm and like they high like they look for certain words. Um, I think that's part of it. If I I could be wrong, but I've just seen a lot of like TikTok creators like have this issue like right off the bat, like posting something and their shit is under review for like four hours before it actually posts. I hope it's not four hours. That'll put us at nine p.m. Pacific Standard, and half the people on East Coast will be asleep. And ah, all right, whatever. We'll figure it out. Hopefully, it's hopefully it's not too, too. Um, hope it gets gets put through. If not, we'll figure it out. I will post uh, after stream. If it is not there, I will post it somewhere, and I will let you guys know in the Discord. So if you guys didn't have it already, exclamation mark Discord. I just put it in the chat there. Um, go join the Discord if you haven't already. Um, our boy Joy's in there already. Um, and go. You, if, and also too is if you guys maybe for some reason don't ha um have that later, maybe message him on Discord, and then you can you can get maybe an Instagram link from him to go, or maybe a, the tarot things I got, or maybe the website once it gets set up. And by the way, I was gonna say about this website. If you need any help with that, let me know. I got a couple of people who I'm sure would be able to help you as well as I'd be able to help you. I'm not the smartest with websites, but I can definitely help you a little bit. No, that'd be great. <laughs> sure. Um. Let's see here. What else we got here? So we're going to go into more deeper questions here, as I said. Um, and I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to challenge you a little bit here because you've already given us a lot. Um, but what life-changing events have you experienced? <laughs> Outside of the ones you've already told us. Outside of the... I... <laughs> so I think like the, the first one that comes to mind is something that happened recently, which was like my first like acid trip ever. 
Um, cause like it just put me down the road of like psychedelic or psychedelic journeys, I guess. And that is like, that has been like the game changer in the last year is psychedelics and just like self, um, analyzation. Um, I don't know if you want like the story behind my first acid. Sure. Um, yeah. So I went to Arizona in February of 2020. This is before like we all you know, the world fell apart. Um, went to Arizona. I was dating someone at the time. She had been living with me for like two fucking years. This, but like, I, I kind of needed to get out of that relationship. I could feel it. Um, it was good. That relationship was like dead on arrival. So anyways, I go to Arizona. It's for this like meetup for this podcast that I had listened to. Um, and I, we had this crazy fucking meetup. It was super cool. Uh, I got to hang out with a bunch of other, like, we call them woo people. Um, and super magical, like, weekend in Arizona. Mind you, it was the first time I'd ever left the East Coast. I'm from New York. Um, <clears throat> and I meet this girl there. Turns out she's the daughter of the person that does the podcast. Um, we hit it off, like, really, like, quickly. And... Um, Long story short on that, I fucking broke up with the girlfriend I was dating at that time, started dating her, and then we went into lockdown together. And I was in Delaware with her for fucking five weeks straight and did a number on me. And mind you, I had COVID during that time, so I'd gotten COVID. And then five weeks were up. Um, I needed to go home because, like, that situation kind of went sour and uh and then like a week later she broke up with me and even asked donovan like i was fucking destroyed over this and um so we were only into april of last year and my friend from north carolina who i met in arizona uh he was just like hey man i was just hanging out with another friend of ours um that was in arizona and stuff and he specifically that that our mutual friend, he he grew mushrooms specifically, and um, but he always had like all kinds of shit on him. And before my friend Andrew left hit, um, our mutual friend's house, um, he had given him two tabs of acid. And he was just like, I don't know why, but you need this. And he was like, Okay. And then he calls me up a couple of days later. He's just like, Hey man, what are you doing? Um, you want to hang out? I was like, Yeah, sure. Like, come up to my place. Um, I ain't, nobody's home other than my sister, so, like, come crash. So he made the journey from North Carolina to New York, and um, he gets to my house. We hug it out. It's the first time we got to see each other since February. Mind you, it's, like, late April. Yeah, it was... No, this was late May. I got the mm -hmm. timeline. This is very late May. And he was just like, yo, this is completely optional, because originally we were just going to drink. And he was just like, completely optional, but our friend gave me this, and he shows me the tabs of acid. Mind you, I'd only fucking smoked weed up until that point. I'm lame. You know, that was 24 at that time. That's I haven't right. done anything. It's, lame. It's, what, it's whatever you do. And um, he's just like, I got this. I've never done acid before. Have you ever done acid? Nope, I've never done acid. You want to do acid together? And I was just like, give me a day to think about it. So... We we eat, we sleep on it. Next day, we decided we're gonna go like, uh, what is it? The that app that you just put in like a certain message in it, it gives you a random fucking coordinate to drive to. Yeah, I forget. Ran, random not. Yeah, random not. Yeah. And I was just like, hey, let's let's do this thing, and so we did. And it was really weird because the app completely malfunctioned on us. So it was just like. Let's just drive in random directions for like a fucking hour and see what happens. And um, we did, and we ended up in a Buddhist monastery. Um, that was that was weird in upstate New York. And we came back, and we were just like, "Yo, tomorrow, let's do, let's fucking do acid. Fuck it, let's do it." And so we took tabs, and we sat on my fucking porch and stared at the woods for like six hours straight, and was just giggling and laughing and shit. It was fucking amazing, <laughs> you know. Um, and that was that <laughs> really long startup, but like, 
that brought me down a whole rabbit hole because like towards the end of that trip, another friend of ours for um, our Arizona trip, she calls us up and she's like, hey, we're going to do a meetup in Savannah. Um, you guys game? And I was just like, I would love to, but I'm fucking broke. And she was just like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just fly you out. And I was just like, Courtney, um, you've known me for two months. You you really want to fly a fucking like perfect stranger out? Like you've known me for fucking two months. She was like, Yeah, I'll fly. I don't I don't give a fuck. Shut up. And flew me out to Savannah and yeah, like I've been fucking running around ever since. I need I need friends like that. <laughs> right? I'm just, just kidding. Right? Uh I actually do have friends like that would do that too, which is crazy enough. So I mean I I, I the only thing that really the only reason I haven't done anything is because COVID is very st- still much around um, in where yeah. I live in BC Canada. Um, we're getting to the end stages of it. Hopefully, it's it's not much longer. Um, yeah, right. And my, my my kind of idea is to do a bit of a maybe next year's take off for like a maybe a month, maybe like half a month, and just go through this the states and go meet all my buddies and the people I've the lovely people I've met through this journey, um, as well. Um, this is this will be an interesting one too for for you. I think as um, kind of based off of who you are, who or what inspires you? Man, um, I know you before. You kind of mentioned a little bit about Prince, kind of inspiring you for music at least, and watching him rip that yeah. guitar. Honestly, what inspires me is like the tale of the underdog. Cause like I've always been like I always root for the fucking underdog, and I think it's because I've always considered myself like the underdog in my life. And like when I see someone who is like gone to hell and back, and like did the thing that they said that they were gonna fucking do, like regardless of like I just like that that cliche story of like overcoming some fucking insurmountable obstacle and shit. But like as for inspiration, like I think I really who really who really inspires me are like really the stories of like the people who have come before me and my family you know my grandparents are a huge inspiration to me like they <laughs> my grandfather still wanted in cuba you know they oh, fucking wow. stole a fucking boat to get here and then they built a complete life you know Crazy. so if i if i'm gonna get, be real real specific like my grandfather is like my biggest inspiration like he's still fucking kicking it in his like late 80s and he's still fucking like he gets up early in the morning every fucking day to do some fucking crazy ass like crazy scientist shit in the backyard like he has his own shit and he's welding shit and whatnot like he's just he's fucking dope <laughs> i think you're real life rick and morty <laughs> kind of kind of except without the alcoholism and there's a language barrier <laughs> uh, okay um <laughs> in, <laughs> i'm just imagining a brick and morty where there's a language barrier <laughs> it's it's, like, it's it's interesting it's just like i don't know what you're saying half the time but i get the gist so <laughs> and yeah i mean yeah and especially too with the um inspiring or starting in a life and 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 from kind of nothing, really, and then yeah, bringing it up is, is pretty. That's pretty crazy. Um, going to the more deeper questions here, as we promised for everyone on the stream, is that we go into the deeper questions uh, throughout this episode. Is you touched on a couple, a uh, few times about uh, heartbreak and past relationships and things like that. And so, uh, my question to you is, what does love mean to you? Oh man, these are heavy hidden questions. What is love to me? Um, for me, it's like, it, it really comes down to like, can I share a space with you for like a shit load of time and not get tired of you? You know, like, cause I'm very, like, I'm finicky. I'm picky about like who I spend my time with, who I spend my energy on. Like, are you someone that is going to listen to me when I fucking like have a piece of advice for you? Like when you have a problem and you're asking for advice, or are you just going to like fuck off? You know, and and this is just not even just romantic love, but it's Mm -hmm. just like, is there that give and take there, you know? Um, And when it comes to love, like, can I unconditionally, like, because if it's not unconditional love, then I don't fucking want it. Like, can you love all the parts of me, even the parts of me that don't fucking serve you and vice versa? Um, And just, just fucking being there for like half of your great friend getting anything done is just showing up 
you know so it's just like do you show up for me like when i need it and vice versa like that's really what like it's a 50 50 exchange i feel like um there is no compromise in love i don't i don't fucking buy that shit like when people are just like love is a compromise i'm like no if i'm fucking compromising pieces of myself to like keep you in my life there's an issue there's a fucking issue you know like it's just unconditional it's something that's freely given it's not a reward or anything like that it's just unconditional unlimited and it's as abundant as water if that makes any sense my hippie jumbo <laughs> I, I i like that it's, it's good especially the unconditional part i mean just ask you first thing is thank you breadcrumb for the the doing great ren and the send the love we appreciate that um just for just for you joey your camera is a little bit offset here and you're cutting off your bit of your face there. Perfect. If you can just get yourself in the middle there and maybe even a little bit more t- uh, turned would be perfect just because we've got you kind of cut a little bit. Perfect. That's awesome. Love good. good. Perfect. Uh, just because I don't want to lose you in, in one of your, your, your good uh, moments here is, is through talking here. Um, you mentioned as well as, is, are you there to listen and, and be there in that sense? And, and you mentioned a little thing that um, we usually do ask here. So I'm going to, I'm going to segue into it. Uh, about advice is, it, is listening to advice uh, some other questions that we, i do commonly ask because i'm more interested in kind of um opening my horizons to kind of what people say is what is the best advice that you have ever received best advice i've ever received you know i don't know if like i i think I don't think it was really advice, but it's something I kind of just live by. And it is very just like simple. Um, And it's something my mother told me like way, way, like back when I was 13, I was having these like fucking like real episodes and shit. And like, because I spent a good chunk of my life really just hating myself, like hate viscerally hating myself. Mm. And I remember there was one time where I told my mother, I was just like, I feel like a fucking failure. I'm never going to amount to anything, you know? And she was just like, you don't need to amount to anything. You don't need to, like, the only thing you need to succeed in is happiness. Like, I don't care if you're the next Carlos Santana or the next bum under the bridge. Are you smiling? Are you happy? Because if that's the case, I don't care where you fucking end up as long as you're safe and you're happy. So I I guess like that's the best advice that I've gotten, even though it's very cliche because like happiness is something completely different to everybody. But like choosing to be happy is an investment in oneself. And I feel like if you are committed to that, you will always have answers. There will always be problems, but you will always have answers to those problems as long as you are giving your heart to the right things. Like that. Um, okay. I, I, and I really like the advice from the mom. I think that is that is a true parent right there. If yeah. You, if you can say to your kid that, yeah, it, and if Breadcrumb said that is beautiful. The If you can... Um, and that's I guess kind of pushes to unconditional love as well is the the point of I don't care if as long as you're happy I don't care where you end up as long as you yeah. are yourself truly happy then we're good you know what I mean and, and that's I mean I think that is a good definition of love in itself uh, for that kind of as a as a whole um you know what's funny Donovan says is Joey actually. Is Joey's actually the person who gave me my favorite piece of advice. Uh, being, and it's being, you are exactly where you need to be. I like that. I like that. Interesting. Okay. Look at that. Full circle, Donovan. Craziness. <laughs> I like it. Um, that is my life. <laughs> sorry? That is my life. Like, everything, <laughs> everything usually comes back to, like, like anything like loose ties or anything usually like end up getting like my, my life is a fucking movie at the moment you know and shit like that it just there's never like a fucking moment that doesn't get resolved i guess that's i mean that's good and i think that's a good way to think about it is don't ever get cu- too caught up on certain things yeah. because everything will end up having a way of working itself in some sort of fashion or way 
um, problems that I had that we have like a week ago are problems that might not be existing anymore. And I mean, there, there's obviously certain senses where there is, that is not a hundred percent true, but I think for the, a good portion of it, that is, that is very true where there's a lot of problems that we get really good people that I think everyone kind of gets a little caught up on. Um, for me, it's having a TikTok that's stuck on community guidelines. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm like, what a, what a good problem to have in like right. the grand thing. Totally. It's like, there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now. And like having a problem with TikTok, I, I'd <laughs> fucking have that issue in a heartbeat. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Not, not, not the worst problem I could be having right now for yeah. sure. By any means, I, I definitely agree with you there. No, no if, ands or buts on that one. Um, I guess kind of segueing a little bit here is, is what is your biggest fear in life? What is my biggest fear in life? Stagnation, probably stagnation. Like if you would ask me like earlier on, I'd probably say like fear itself because like fear is, can either be the thing that fucking stops you dead in your track or it could be your greatest motivator. And like, I try my best to have fear as my motivator. But stagnation is my biggest fear. Like, I never want to be one of these fucking old fuckers that are just not with the times and shit. And, like, you know, you got a, a lot of, like, old racist people nowadays. And, like, the excuses are like, oh, it was different in his fucking time. Like, I never want to fucking be that person. Like, I want to still be learning new things when I'm, like, hopefully 80 years old. You know? like stagnation like i never want to be that fucking weirdo that's just like ah today's music shit because that is a terrible fucking take i think music is only getting better with fucking time yeah and yeah I, we're in some fucking nutty ass times right now but like life is getting better overall for everyone i think i think it's i agree with that music that music take though is that it it's now more than ever harder to get um to get music heard and and to kind of yeah to get in, in so it's called so if you can kind of i mean i don't know if make it to the word but if you can kind of like push to have something that that succeeds in a sense whatever that success may be warranted by um you're doing something right because it's it's not easy nowadays it's it's not as it's not saying that it was easy before but it, it's it's definitely harder now with um more than anything would be the saturation yeah. Wanting to kind of be the next there's not a lot person. of motivation there's mm -hmm. not a lot of motivation anymore because like monetary motivation unless you make it like big like someone like billy eilish or like chance the fucking rapper it's just like what are we doing here like are we doing like wedding gigs some shit like that like if that's what you want to do cool like if you can make if you can live off of that and shit and you have fun with it awesome mm -hmm. fucking go but like there's really not a lot of there's never been less incentive to be a fucking artist i think when it comes to like monetary thing like of course <laughs> excuse me Good. um have, you know self-expression is always going to be a thing as long as like we humans are here on the earth mm -hmm. but like, as a monetary thing like i don't think there's ever been less of a fucking incentive to be an artist mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so like it's not easy. It's not easy by any no, means. It's not. For sure. Um what we have here. Can you remember the last time that you cried? And what was the reason? When was the last time I cried? Also too, well, Joey is thinking. I would urge you guys to hit up exclamation mark guest and go follow him on Instagram if you have not already. Um, also in his, thank you, Donovan. Also in his bio, you can also go see and book um, his tarot readings. Um, our goal is to get you fully booked, by the way, today. <laughs> that is our goal. Is, is to... Fuck, man. <laughs> uh, is, is to I mean, yeah, that'd be fucking amazing because like, I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be going up to New York and Shane would be great to have money. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But, um, I think the last time I cried, like, there are two points that are kind of, like, in my head right now. And it's just, like, right before I went to this, like, meetup in North Carolina two weeks ago and kind of after it, too. Like, the before crying was more so, like, I, I just, I feel like I've been on, even though I've, like, 
the spiritual journey like i've been doing it since forever but mm-hmm. like i haven't taken it seriously up until like last year really and like to be kind of like leading yourself in the dark for so fucking long um and like i know a year doesn't sound that fucking long and especially being cut off from all your woo friends and shit you don't feel as magical mm. and not having a lot of money in your fucking bank account and i was like sitting here i was just like this is probably the last hurrah i have if I, I'm probably going to have to go get a fucking job, like a real fucking job and like go back to this and and like kind of just wage slave away, you know, and I I, cry, I had a moment where I had to like mourn that, that reality that I might not be able to like do spirituality as my fucking thing. And like I mourned it and I was just like, OK, like if this is our last hurrah, like we're going to fucking like make it a banger. Like we're going to go all fucking in here in North Carolina. And North Carolina happened. I met all these amazing fucking people. The people that, like, put it all together. Like, they have their hand. Like, they have, like, like they're, they're in talks with, like, Netflix and shit. Like, to do documentaries and shit like that. And they approached me. And they were just like, yo, we want you to do music with us. Like, we love what you're fucking doing. We want you to come on the fucking podcast with us. I met a bunch of awesome fucking friends that were just like, hey, we want to do fucking music. And, yo, you can stay at my house for however long you fucking want. Like, I live in the Bronx. And, this, like, all these fucking people mm. were just like, yo, I want to open up my house to you. And, like, I want your brand of chaos in my fucking home. <laughs> like, I was just like, okay, I... Maybe we don't have to fucking like maybe the dream is still alive. Okay, cool. You know? And I remember when I finally had a moment to my, myself after that whole meetup and shit, and I was by myself, I fucking sobbed like a baby. Cause I really thought it was all like the dream is dead, like we're gonna have to do this as a side fucking thing and like go back to doing the thing that makes you fucking miserable. And just to have that thing that you've been pining over for the last 365 days where, like, you've been, like, continuously, like, kicked in the balls by the universe. And you have to get up from that, like, initial kick in the balls and smile back at the universe's face and be like, give me another. Mm -hmm. Give me another fucking swift kick in the balls. I can take it. Kind of a thing. And then to have shit just work out. Like, I'm not used to things just working out for me. I usually have to beg, borrow, and fucking steal, you know? And having everything just work out so perfectly, I fucking, I I had a moment and I sobbed and I was just like, this is what it's, this is just like a taste of what it's like to like actually be about the shit that you talk about, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's fucking beautiful. And like, I wouldn't trade that like eight minute sob for the fucking world <laughs> you know I like that but yeah and i think as far as the yeah and i think especially when you you know it's a dream it's just something you really want to do and when you know that it's it might be slipping away and then when you also get, it gets revived in a sense especially by something like that that's that's an amazing the second feeling. fucking win. yeah yeah and it was like see see we took it to the absolute fucking edge are you happy yeah like did you see what you're capable of like you you stuck it out and then all of a sudden like the last eight months of suffering that you were dealing with just doesn't exist anymore to you Mm -hmm. it's it's insane like success is a hell of a fucking drug sure sure that's awesome though that's yeah it's a good story that was a that's that's definitely one of the one of the Oh, I'm so sorry. I have things popping up on my computer here. <laughs> um, <laughs> the I have that's the second notification has come up. What's going on with my computer today? Um, <laughs> let's see what was going. Mercury here. retrograde. Mercury, exactly. Um, yes, thank you, Donovan. Exclamation mark guest, if you haven't already. Oh, thank you for fixing the Twitter thing. Oh, you know what? Actually, as I'm as I see that, I'm gonna actually click it here and follow you because I have not followed you on on Twitter yet. Um. There we go. Perfect. And I promise to like follow everybody back like after this shit. <laughs> you're you're too nice. <laughs> we appreciate you for that. Um oh hang on, I got like flash banged by my <laughs> by my computer. Um all right here, what else we got here? Uh so you talked about how before you've already died three times. But let's say unfortunately 
night was the night and you were told that tonight is the day that this is it. This is the last day on earth. What would you regret not doing if you died tonight? Hmm. I'm going to be a hundred percent honest with you. I don't think I have any fucking regrets. I really fucking don't. You know, maybe like the only thing I would regret is that I spent so many years hating myself. I think that's what I probably regret the most is because of that. Because like when you when you hate yourself, you end up hating the people around you unintentionally and you start hurting people because like you start projecting you treat people how you feel about yourself and if you fucking hate yourself you're probably not treating people around you that fucking great so like if that if there would be a regret like even that like i don't necessarily like would say it was, would be a regret it would it would be something i'd like to change but i i think i could die with like peace of mind awesome uh, yeah and i think it's i liked your point there is it's you you hurt the people around you more than anything and that was the biggest thing for you and obviously yeah like take care of yourself for sure 100 percent. but i think it, it shows yeah. this, how selfless you are um in being open and and caring for others with your your kind of take on how uh, it was hurting others more than more than anything ken carter is also in this chat sorry to switch topics really fast there no mr, worries, mr. No ken no carter our boy, our homie. How's it going, Ken? How you been? Um, a past house guest, Mr. Ken Carter. Um, how's it hanging? What's going on? How you been? It's good to see you. Uh, we have our lovely guest, exclamation mark guest. We'll give you the links for our boy. Um, we have the lovely Joey on our podcast, um, who is a full-time tarot reader, a um, artist, a musician, um uh, from what i've seen today a storyteller uh <laughs> a, ma a man of many hats if you will um and they're, they're showing us all of them today so we're we're very 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 um excited for this one and and i don't know too if you if you heard about this ken uh but we actually had a this is this is the last minute throw together we had a what's good let's go we we had a bit of a cancellation today so today's been a little bit crazy and also, too, I, I just want you guys to know, and also for you to know um, as well, Joey, um, this is no nothing um, related for you in any sense. So I don't want you to, to think that as well. But I am realizing now that I'm slowly depleting because I have barely ate anything today. Um, and I haven't eaten anything in, I'm closing to about seven hours now. Um, and yeah, dude, I'm, I, I, I was <laughs> so, so that uh, my energy is draining a little bit. I'm, I'm pounding down some water um but and so i'll we'll keep me keep me going here um but i i i i will very likely not be eating on stream so um with that um we probably have a couple more questions here and then i'm probably gonna let you go it'll probably be a shorter stream than usual um just based off of that because i I feel like i can't bring you guys the full energy and i want to give you the 100 percent um i also want to be able to represent joey in the best light that i can um mr ken carter joey sounds like an amazing fella i i agree um has a has had a um a bit of a, a spiritual past too as you've kind of explained to me from your side of things too so i i think the two of you would get along quite well uh kenny um hit me up all right yeah <laughs> um let's see what do we got for questions here that we could ask you here um i got a couple here a couple good ones here before we before we conclude this uh podcast today but um one of them and and i uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your kind of take on this. Is what social stigma does society really need to get over? Hmm. I guess, like, just in general, like, there's just way too many stigmas. Like, this sounds like a cop out because, like, I'm I'm going for all of them, but like, just people they fear things that that they don't understand, right? Hmm. So, like. Usually how a lot of people deal with fear is like they'll mock, they'll berate, they'll they'll try to destroy the thing that they don't understand because really it's it's scary. You know, like not to sound like a fucking like I, I feel like there's so many like stigmas around like women's choice to do with what they want with their fucking bodies. Like that's something that it gets me pissed off. 
Another thing is like people not respecting like trans people and non binary people. Like that type of shit pisses me the fuck off, you know? Um, kind of like a big umbrella I'm throwing mm. out here. You know, but like people just need to let other people fucking exist in their skin however the fuck they want to. Like, if, if they're not hurting anyone, why can't what's wrong with letting them be the way they want to fucking be? Like, I don't like that. That's always something that gets to me is just like people not letting people exist. I that's how I would have perfectly worded it as well is is. If someone else is not doing anything that hurts anyone else, I mean, and probably themselves too, I would say probably as the, yeah, that, that's, that's obviously obvious, like right there. Like if they're not hurting themselves or anyone around them, like just let people fucking be. That's yeah. it. As long as you're, and like you said earlier too, as long as you're happy, that's that's the main thing. Is, yeah, is happy as long as you are content and happy with what you are doing and it's not hurting anyone. I mean, have fun with what you are doing. Uh, there's no questions, if, and, or buts for me. I mean, I'm going to vibe with it, but that's on me. I don't need, that doesn't, I don't need to. Yeah, um, exactly. So, yeah, no, it's. And not everything is for you. And exactly. that's okay. That's what life is. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. It, 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 there's, there's no single thing. And it's funny, I actually had this question on here. Um, but it's a question I've actually, I don't think I've ever, ever, I mean, I might have once asked, but I don't think I've ever really asked based off of because i think that that statement you just said is so true is the, the question is and you do not have to answer this by any means i mean if you have an idea or even it's just something uh, comedic to say you're more than welcome to bring it up uh but what is something that everyone absolutely everyone in the entire world can gr agree on um i don't think there's an answer for it. um mm. right <laughs> it's, so let's go don't feel like you have to get stuck on this because it, it, it is a question that i will ask i have i've actually avoided it because i don't think they're I've thought about this for a long time. I don't. Think I, don't I don't think there's really like a good answer. Yeah, like, like that kind of goes. That kind of goes against my full being. Is just like you should have the right to disagree with fucking anything you sure. want. Someone um, said to me once that that um that when I said that they said that cows go moo, and I said, well, I'm sure there's someone in the world. <laughs> I'm sure there's some asshole. It's like no, they they fucking go whatever. You know, there's always going to be a contrarian. It's that same person who puts their toilet paper under. That's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, <I'm> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, the get this man some help. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is a current trend that makes no sense to you whatsoever? <laughs> Hi, Tara. <laughs> um. I don't know, like, maybe it's just because I'm old and I, I just don't pay attention, because I, I don't really see there any trends, like, that I'm just like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't fucking get that, you know, and, like, most of the trends I see are, like, usually, like, TikTok, and, like, when I see that shit, unless it's, like, some shit, like, the, with the Kylie Jenner lip thing, like, <laughs> where, where people are just objectively fucking themselves up. Like, and even that, I still understand the trend because it, it's a clout chasing thing. Yeah. Like, so even that, it's not that I don't understand it. I'm just like, hey, maybe don't do that. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't really think there's a, a trend that I can think of off the top of my head where I'm just like, those, those fucking people there, they're a menace, you know? Right. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's good. That's okay. You don't have to have a, a, a perfect one, but that's that is kind of funny. That that lip trend, told, right? Oh my goodness! Yeah, I never heard like that. People trend. eating Tide Pods and shit, and like, there's a part of me that, that completely fucking gets it. They look like candy. They look like they would taste good. <laughs> you know, well, Tide Pods. But yeah. At the same time, I'm a fucking adult, and I know. Yeah, that's gonna fuck me up. <laughs> Um, by the way, hi Brad, how's it going? Thank you for the posture checks. We have to actually check our posture, make sure we're all we're all sitting up proper there, and not not sitting oh, slouching too much. Posture right? In the world. <laughs> right, especially when you get talking to everyone, just like leans back and all that. Um, yes, yes. Thank you. Let's go, uh, Ken, for throwing up there. We have um, Joey Rodriguez on today, also known as Joey. What I will be calling him is Joey. Uh, go follow him on Instagram. Um, our, our our goal today, we're gonna try and fill up his books for tarot readings. So if you haven't already, go check out the Instagram, go hit the bio and go go book yourself one. Um yeah, I I would I I'm gonna go check it out after stream for sure. 
the see kind of what's going on and i'll i'm sure we'll talk if you do plan to book i just i just do need to fucking uh forewarn that i probably won't be available to do actual readings until sometimes sometime next week because i will be going to georgia and uh having a little mushroom trip um (laughs) (laughs) gotta get back on that horse right (laughs) sure i mean (laughs) hey next week is not a bad turnover time so that's not that's not bad at all yeah um yes what's up baba how's it going good to see you in here um thanks for popping by um yeah so i don't don't know if everyone's been here lurking or if everyone's just popping in now but if you have been lurking i mean you already know who we're talking to but if not exclamation mark yes uh and that will give you uh the links for the lovely joey um we are in deep questions right now um for those of you that are just joining us um what else we have here let's see here we've we've had a i mean I like this one. Actually, this is the first question that came to mind when I actually met you when you jumped in the Discord today. Um, and I, I, I think it's just because you are so comfortable in yourself from what I'm seeing. And I, and I adore that and I love that. Um, but do you ever feel like you are a child? Oh, I fucking tell people right off the bat I'm a fucking child. Um, like, that, that's the fucking secret to happiness, if you guys didn't know. It's like, you gotta feed your inner child. Like, if... If you are not constantly like, and I know like life gets to be like, 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 trust me, I have like mental health, my own mental health issues. Like sometimes you can't fucking feed that inner child. Sometimes you can't fucking rock that baby to sleep, mm. you know, but I do my damnedest every fucking day to honor that child that I was. Cause that child is what I turn into. It's the, it was the vessel that helped me survive. And if I'm not honoring that 24 fucking seven, like, what am I doing? You know, everything I go into, I have to do it with childlike, playful curiosity. Because if if it's not a game, it's not fun. And then I don't want to fucking do it. You know, if it's not a game, if I can't have fun with it, then I I don't deal with it. it it's just not my fucking thing. I agree. I think that's and that's a good one. I think it's as as much as you can act like a kid and and be a kid. And uh, it was actually so kind of going kind of back to where we were before we asked, I asked you about like the advice thing I've been thinking about this because I haven't had like I mean I've had advice that I've followed throughout the years and so yeah and there's obviously would always been some sort of advice that I'd be able to provide however I came up with one that I think resonates best with me right now Brad thanks for stopping by we'll, st- we'll talk to you later um is the is don't get so caught up on the memories you want to fucking make them like and 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 like be able to kind of like enjoy what you're what you're um doing currently like it's it's i think we get so caught up in what happened rather than what's happening and it's something that i wish i was better at because it's something that i've struggled with for a long time of being it's something you practice yeah it's something you know um and like like that's the core like idea behind like meditating like I I fucking like preface. I fucking hate New Ageism, like New Age spirituality. I think there's just so many fucking issues with it. So much cultural appropriation. So much like what we call in the biz spiritual bypassing, where like something shitty will happen to you, and you're just like, oh well, I signed up for it. Like this is the life I signed up for. Like no, like that's not my brand of spirituality. I don't fuck with that shit. That's bullshit. You know, your emotions are real. You need to honor them. All right. Like, I think of this life. Yes. Like, I think of my life as a fucking video game. I do. But as this video game, like, I am consciousness in this meat suit that we call Joey. And, like, your core principles of, like, yes, the past happened. Okay. You can honor the past. But, like, if you dwell in it, that's where we get into depression. And then the future is the thing everybody really gets fucked up about. And, like, that's where we get anxiety for. And, like, if you want to get into, like, cool spiritual talkers and shit, like, listen to Alan Watts, Terrence McKenna, and shit like that. But Alan Watts says it perfectly. The future is a fucking lie. Anything that is not the present is a fucking lie. It doesn't exist. Be here right now. That's where you are. What will happen is going to fucking happen. You could prepare for it, cool. But just be the human being. You're in this meat suit right now. You are player number one here. 
just fucking play the game. Yeah, no, I think I and I struggle with that so much, and I, I've always kind of tried like the past like year and a bit. Um, funny enough, it was the weirdest thing, is the 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 Netflix show, um, The Last Dance, Michael mm. um, Michael Jordan, where they he talked about his. It was basically based off of his whole career. Beautiful story if you haven't if you haven't watched the Netflix series, definitely go we watch it. Um, you, like if you're into sports, it definitely adds on, but you do not have to be into sports whatsoever to to le- to like that show. It's it's basically just based off of like teamwork and being, um, kind of who he was as a person and the people that he surrounded with himself with and how he kind of looked at life in a sense. Um, it was very very interesting. Um, but I would say is, um, definitely someone to, to kind of look up to in a sense, and and not for every reason. But I would say is what I looked up to more. I think is how he was so present, and they talked about that a lot. About he was always in, he was always present in the moment. He had always was having fun. Um, he, I mean, there was obviously things that he was looking forward to, like championships and stuff like that. Um, but he never, he never dwelled on anything like past or, pre- or, or past or future. He always was like very like present and had fun, and the people around him always had fun because he was that kind of present dude who was always there at that time. He wasn't off thinking about other things. Um, and something it's it's hard. It's 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 very easy to get caught up in and what happened before, what happened uh, previous, and I think those little moments to like just like take it in is is really good. And I and I don't know enough about your about like um, spiritualism and new age and old age and things like that that you spoke of. Um, so I don't have too much of an opinion on it. However, I will say is yeah. we we. You're, if someone's about to tell me that we are not in a game of Sims, that someone is controlling me, and every time that I exit out and I forget about something, and I'm sitting there staring at my computer, going, "What was I gonna do again?" Or st- going out to the other room, and I'm like, "What was I gonna grab yeah. again?" You're telling me that someone didn't program. That? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, not only that, but like, look what has happened to America. Like, like, look at America in a vacuum over 2020. All right, look at all the. Re- ridiculous shit that has happened in this, just this country alone during 2020 all right craziness with everything like, covid related and, and like, like and, the black and you don't you don't and... have to look at it like a fucking game or anything this is just how i look at it you know because like i know a lot of people that are very much like how can you say that you know like there, there are people that are fucking struggling yeah you're fucking right man there are a lot of people struggling and shit mm-hmm. the very fact that life as we know it can be as difficult and as fucking cruel as it is like if this wasn't some type of fucking like simulation and shit man that's even fucking sadder like not that it makes anything fucking better because like people are fucking suffering Mm -hmm. but it's just like i don't know the other uh, the other fucking plausible thing is that like every single thing that has ever existed is just a fucking coincidence and it's just like, I don't believe in coincidences. They don't fucking exist. Like, I'm here talking to you off of coincidence. I don't think so. <laughs> you know? It might be a shit happened for, for me. me. Luck for me that <laughs> I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you anything. need a guest, and I need somebody to listen to my fucking soapbox. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, man. I'm here to listen. And it's, very, it's been definitely interesting these past uh, almost two hours here that we've been, I've been able to sit here and get to kind of know you in that sense. Um, what? Yeah, you guys are talking together because I'm the best mod, Donovan says. <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> um, what else do we have here as far as questions going on that as well? Um, you guys also haven't already. Exclamation mark Discord. Exclamation mark Tourney. Those are two links that I, you guys should be checking out too. Um, one, we'll get you a spot on our uh, sofa, as we call it, which is our gen chat. Um, you guys can talk and hang out, um, ask questions, kind of get to know me, and maybe even Joey too. Um, he will be in the, he's in the discord now. He'll be hanging out there as well. Um, also maybe I'll able to ask him, um, certain questions after stream as well as looking into booking with him in the future, I think would be something that you could also do in the discord. I'm sure he'd be, or just DM me on Instagram too. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. For sure. You know, if you have a fucking question, like we didn't quite get to it. Cause like, I'm still figuring out discord. I'm a fucking idiot mm-hmm. when it comes to that shit. Oh, good. We'll get you in there, especially too, because I hear I hear you when I called you this when we we I, I guess we we pulled you away from uh, Minecraft this afternoon. Yeah, I was um, just playing Minecraft <laughs> <laughs> um, when you j- jumped in the call and came to help us out and and fill in the spot for today. Um, 
So definitely we'll have to maybe we'll have to get you on we'll have to kind of get you more educated on Discords. So you can come play with us in certain senses, whether it be on um our Discord game nights when we go to our Minecraft server or something else. Uh, oh, that would be sick. For sure. What other games do you play? Do you play anything else other than Minecraft? Really? Like and it, it's it, like I used to be like a Call of Duty Halo kid, but right. now I'm just like, playing my fucking Minecraft and farm sims. Like I play Stardew Valley and shit <laughs> now. <laughs> like I'm just like, uh I don't know what happened to me, man. I just like fucking easy games right. now. <laughs> Those chill games are great. Yeah, like yeah. I, if I could just unplug myself for like four straight hours, cool. Like because right. my brain is constantly running at like ninety miles an hour, so I need something to just like chill me out for a bit. This what's called this past week. I kind of I kind of undisconnected it. I was um was it Sunday? I had a day off, and I for the first time since I've started the stream in March. I actually did, like did not do anything work related. I will call it towards the stream, um, and it felt good. I had to remind myself like this is okay. It's it all it's okay, but I also need to remember that I need to make sure I continue on the creative things and not get too caught up on just having too much fun, and just that's the only thing I do. I mean, there's time for fun, there's time for play, and finding that kind of balance is is de is definitely beneficial for me and also my content and things like that. And um. You know, it was it was good. It was it felt it felt good, but now now we're back on the grind again. But that's all right. Um, having fun with it, having a lot of fun with it. Um, Fuck yeah, yeah for sure. Um, let's see what we got here. You're getting to the end of this set here, but I do have a couple questions here. What's what are three things on your bucket list? My bucket list. Yeah. Um. This is really fucking corny and cliche, but like this is like teenage Joey, like bucket list. And this is like my biggest dream is to like to play at fucking Coachella is like okay. has been like a pipe dream of mine since I was like 15 or 16. I saw a fucking Tame Impala play like a sick ass set. And I was just like, I want to fucking play there. Like, and I know Coachella is like this capitalist piece of shit fucking concert now. But, like, there's the teenager Joey that's just, like, I just want to be fucking heard. You know? Okay. I, like, probably play at Coachella would be fucking sick. Um, fucking... I mean, like, I... As you can see, like, I don't really plan for the future that much. I think <laughs> that's that okay. part of my thing. Like, I'm, I'm very much just freestyling life constantly. Um, Fun way to live. Yeah, it's, it, it gets boring when, like, you didn't have anything lined up for your fucking self, but, like, it really hits when, like, usually around summer where everybody's, like, willing to do shit, like, sure. cool shit. Hey, man, look at this. Look at today. Yeah. Man, exactly. like, fuck it. Um, I do, like, I really want to, and again, this is another, like, very, like, boring answer, but, like, I want to, like, travel the world, like, on, by fucking airplane, by, like, boats, trucks, whatever the fuck. Like, mm -hmm. I want to go see the fucking world. Um, and, like, I, by see the world, I want to, I want to, like, live at least, like, a month or two in, like, some interesting fucking countries and, like, really, like, soak up the culture. Like that would be something fucking amazing. It's like it, I'm going to fucking do it because it it is on my list. You know, Coachella, maybe a pipe dream might happen, might not. You know, but like it's fun to fucking imagine. You know, like definitely, I'm definitely going to like fucking live abroad in like multiple fucking places and shit. That's definitely like on the list to do. Um, and really, I want to fucking be able to like. Dead, like my last thing and again this is an inevitability but like i have AD, i have really bad adhd um and like no way I've had, <laughs> i do I too by the way the to fucking, like i've had the ability to like record my own music and shit for almost a year now and like i think there was a part of me that was just like oh i'd be fucking recording like every single fucking day like just grinding out these songs i haven't completed an entire song in the whole fucking time i've had a recording set up yeah. and i'm just like, damn this sucks <laughs> so i want to eventually be able to like learn that flow well enough to where i could be like putting out an album a year like i want to get to that point like yeah. even if nobody fucking listens to them i just want to be able to put out that that amount of content 
Well, my friend, I will be I will be listening for sure. You'll have my ears for sure. Don't you worry. I'm very, very intrigued by the person you are, Joey. It's it, it's been wonderful uh, getting to kind of meet you today. So I, you'll definitely have a, one pair of ears at least. Um, you flatter me endlessly. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, it's funny. I was going to say, but I didn't know how to bring it up in a sense, because obviously you don't know much about me. Um, but I actually do have ADHD as well. And when you said ADHD, I, I've kind of noticed because we have very similar tendencies where we're always touching our yeah. face. <laughs> like yep. you and I, we're always fidgeting. Like, yeah. And like, I'm, I'm super like self-conscious about like where I'm moving around and shit. And so, cause I can't move, st- I can't sit still while I'm talking. Like yeah. I can't, I'm in a swivel chair right now. So I'm just like trying so hard not to fucking move. Right. Yeah. No, I, I feel feeling like... miserably at it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly yeah so no 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 worries at all it's <laughs> it's all good what's called um yeah and it's funny because i there's we've run into a couple guests uh usually to the towards the beginning of when we were doing this that had no idea what i was saying because i speak so damn fast um mm. and it's funny because adhd kids get that like it's it's like an instant click yeah there's, there's no issues like we can speed around each other back and forth all oh, and like donovan is fucking roast me because like you, you know how like when you're talking sometimes and like some words just like get combined yeah and like you're talking so fast and like he'll call me out and it's just like yeah like he'll take the pronunciation like yeah dumbass you, you learn how to fucking speak <laughs> I'm just like fuck you, Donovan. <laughs> I, I, I've also heard the one where it's, it's uh, that's not a word at all. That's not English. <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's a, that's a go-to with me when I when I slur my words together. For sure, I've I've heard I've heard that that's not English. Um, <laughs> uh, and he would not be the yeah. only one to bug me about that by any means. Um, and that's only because <laughs> that's only because I bug him about the same things. Had it been the other way around, and I'm sure you do similar things as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, we roast exactly. the shit out of each other. It's just that he's better at roasting me than I am at roasting. <laughs> and I will fully admit that. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Um, if you could ask a single person one question and they had to answer, answer truthfully, who and what would you ask? And that person can be dead or alive. And by the way, Galaxy, welcome back to the stream. Thanks for coming back. Hope you had a good walk. Hmm. Now that's a fucking tough one. Cause like there's just so many musicians I'd like to fucking ask shit about. Mm-hmm. And then there's just like my own like selfish shit too, where I'm just like, oh, I'd bring back one of my fucking relatives and ask them like why they did this bullshit. You know? Um fuck man. It can be anything you would like. And I, I, I understand, though, because it is hard when it's like one person. Yeah, there's like one person. It's just like, who the fuck do I really even give a shit enough about to be like, hey. Because like most of the time I could like read people pretty easily. And I was just like, oh, this person did this, this, and this because X, Y, Z. If I really like... wanted to know, I'll pull out the fucking tarot I guess, card. I guess that's kind of your job. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um... This one's going to be a little bit, like, rough and, like, trigger warning, like, like, I think I'd bring, I'd, I'd fucking sit down with my Uncle Tony and he might, obviously people aren't going to know, like, Donovan knows this story, but my Uncle Tony, um, he killed himself back in 2014, something like that, and, um, you know, he didn't leave a note. It was very, like, spur of the fucking moment. <clears throat> and I'd probably bring him back and I'd just ask him, just like, was it worth it? You know, why'd you do it? I have my own, like, assumptions about it, but, like, was it worth it? Are you are you happy now? Please tell me you are. Like, I hope there's something, like, better for you on the other side. That would probably be my one question. Sorry for your, for your loss there. Not easy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know... So, like, for someone who has been very suicidal for, like, a good chunk of his fucking life, you know, that was my first, like, real wake-up call. Um, And I've had many. It's not like it stopped after that. <laughs> and I wish it did. But, like, I'd probably ask him, just like, are you, are you at least happy now? I hope you are. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry to bring down the vibe, oh, no, everybody. This is the point of the show is to get deep and hit those hard hitting questions and things that I can hopefully learn more thinking about that. But yeah, no, it's it's that's tough, and especially you said what fourteen you or years old you were. No, it was back in twenty fourteen. I was seventeen, eighteen. That's still when really, it really young, and like the process yeah. of all that, and also too when you're trying to figure out who you are as a person, and everyone's saying, "Oh, you're an adult now," and things like that. Like that's that's not a thing yeah. you want to add on to that that kind of that topper of all that is is it makes it very very tough and and using and also like you said there's there was no kind of like answer in a sense and yeah. I, I i feel bad for you because i wish there was some sort of that closure and um i'm sure i'm sure your uncle tony's looking down at you smiling and, and happy that you're as happy as you can be and, and enjoying your life um even though I don't know him by any means, I just I I think yeah. that's I tell you probably I hope told so. me. Or at the very least, I hope like whatever he's doing on the other side, like maybe he's reincarnated, maybe he's done like whatever he's doing. I hope he's happy because he wasn't happy towards the end, and I just hope he found kind of happiness. That's all. It's too bad that he couldn't be on this earth with us today. That's 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 the unfortunate part. I I wish that he he was he was here and someone you could kind of. Um, talk to you in that sense and have that 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 connection still i really kind of- i really do it you know because like you know there, there there were a lot of like factors that went into what he did and like i think one of them was is that like you know his parents never accepted that he was gay and like that was definitely something that contributed to him later in life and you know like later down like Later on in my life, I realized that, you know, I was bisexual and I dated a man, like, back when I was, like, 21, things like that. Um, He was a bit older than me, though, and I didn't see it then. I only started seeing it now that he was extremely manipulative of me. Mm. And uh, I wish he had been around so I could, like, talk to him about that type of shit, because I'm sure he would have had a lot of answers. And I probably would have gotten out of that situation a lot faster had like i had his counsel you know with the yeah <laughs> baba goes sheesh yeah i don't think it's a sheesh it's yeah. more like a sheesh yeah, yeah no <laughs> kidding for sure um what do you with kind of going off of that is you, you've mentioned about um the i'm totally drawing a blank it the the, the sims the sims thing clicked off my head and whew, gone yeah um the let's see here what was i there's something i was i was gonna ask and it was i don't even know if it was a i don't even think it was a question i think it was oh actually yes i did i got it here um it's with this he talks about how um his parents weren't very accepting of um him being gay you you've talked a bit about you having your struggles with your dad uh a little bit about mom about how she doesn't care as long as you're happy um so yeah. okay what is like right now currently are you close with your parents and and kind of like why like what's the i'm super cl- i've always been like super close with my mother like is she's very much the reason why i'm still fucking standing you know like back in my teenage years like she stopped me from doing a lot of like shit to myself <laughs> i was very self-destructive when i was younger I'd, I'd fucking punch myself i'd fucking bang my head my head against fucking walls anything to just like hurt myself and like there are a lot of times where like she had to physically fucking wrestle my ass to the fucking ground because i was just like in a fucking rage i'm like 13 14 i don't know what to do with my fucking self you know um but no like me me and my mother are extremely close where it comes to my father that's a completely different fucking story. <laughs> um, and the sad part is that, like, I had gotten to a point with my father last year, year before that, I mean, two years ago, where I was just like, you know, what? I accept the thing that you are. You know, you are not the parent that I needed, nor the parent I fucking deserved. But I also understand you're a human being. You. Like, me knowing, like, parts of his fucking childhood and realizing this motherfucker never had a goddamn chance of, like, coming out unscathed, you know? He had a really fucked up childhood. Really fucked up. And realizing he had never had a chance. And mind you, this is after years of fucking therapy. And, like, coming to the conclusion, I'm like... 
at some point he stopped listening to his inner child. He started like denying himself. He started betraying himself, you know, and the alcohol just made it fucking worse. You know, um, I got to a point in my understanding where I was just like, I forgive you for what you did to me. And I still love you. You're my father. I still love you. Um, he lives in Florida and like at the time, like I had reached this understanding, I was still in New York. Now I'm in Florida and we're like 15 minutes away and we don't fucking talk to each other, but that's of his own fucking doing. Um, so like when I first like moved down here and whatnot, like we, we weren't close, but like we could fucking sit down and talk Hmm. like, and it wouldn't turn into an argument. And I like, expectation i didn't have any expectations i was just like anytime i can fucking spend with him when we're not fucking bickering where i don't want to fucking lunge at him and beat the fuck out of him you know that's cool time with me you know that's that's cool and around this time like we were starting to actually get a little bit closer and like i was hanging out with him like once a week it was cool i was just like oh wow this is interesting um he hasn't really fucked it up yet cool and then um, when I finally decided to finalize that I was moving down to fucking Florida and one of the, like, he decided to like pick a fight with me one day. And it was like the weirdest fucking thing too. Cause like he had texted me. He's just like, Hey, how are you doing? Like, how was your trip? Blah, blah, blah. I was just like, Oh, it was cool. Like, you know, I'm just chilling at, you know, Abuelita and Abuelito's house, like just doing whatever. He was like, okay, that's cool. It was like, I asked him what he was doing. He was just like, yeah, I just got off work and just kicked my ass. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I hear that, man. And that was the thing that he decided to, like, go off about. Like, mm. He was just like, what the fuck would you know about a hard day's fucking work? And I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm like, let's, let's pause for a second before we get into something. All right. Like, let's. Like, maybe you misconstrued what I said. Like, let's relax, okay? Mm. I was trying to empathize my man. Like, let's put the brakes on this shit. And he, he was just like, you know, you don't understand, Joey. I, like, you don't have any fucking direction in life. And you're gonna, I'm scared you're gonna end up like me. And all this fucking shit. And I was just still trying to be compassionate and loving. I was just like, look. Hey, I really, like, I get what you're trying to say here, man. But, you know, giving unsolicited advice is is kind of like a no-no in my world. Like, I'll tell you if I want something, you know. That's a, like, that's a big thing about, like, having a good relationship with people is just all about your boundaries. And, like, my boundaries is just like, look, man, I didn't ask for your fucking advice. I didn't ask for your fucking opinion. When I ask for your opinion, you'll know it. You know, don't don't get shit twisted. And um, unfortunately, this man had had me fucking mistaken for somebody else. And um, just started go- going off on a rant. It's just like, you don't know what it's like to fucking like work your ass off. And mind you, like I used to work at a school for like behavioral individuals with autism. And uh, I loved that job. I worked it for fucking two years, but I was dealing with like grown men half the fucking time like these were kids that were anywhere from like 16 to 21 years old and they were like violently behavioral yo man i've gotten concussions i have scars on my fucking hands for my kids like i have my fucking battle wounds i earned my fucking stripes at that job man like they fucking kicked my ass and for him to fucking sit there and just be like, you don't know what it's like to like uh, for to do a hard day's work. And I was just like, look, man, um, before we get real confrontational, you are hurting my feelings right now. Let's let's get down to the like you're kind of hurting. Like what you're saying is hurtful. And I don't want to continue this conversation if this is what it's going to be like. And then he was just like, oh, so you just talk to me for money. And I was just like, when did this get fucking thrown in? Mm-hmm. Like, and I think what really spawned this fucking, I think he was drinking, I'll be honest with you. Cause like, that's the only thing that makes sense in my head as to why he was just being so fucking scatterbrained and weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what did him in was, you're just like your mother. 
and like that is a fucking mortal sin. Like you can fucking shit on me all fucking day long. All right, I won't really, I won't necessarily go to war with you. You shit on my fucking mother, I will come for your throat. There's just no if ands or like I, I, I can be fun. Like you guys have seen me on here, mm. but like just don't talk about my fucking mother. Like that is the only goddamn rule. That's it. And this motherfucker violated that. And um, I let loose fucking 12 years worth of shit that I just hadn't told him because it was just like, we'd either had no contact or I was too scared to fucking tell him. And he didn't like that, but it was, it was pretty cathartic for me because it was just like, I'm no longer the 13-year-old that you smack the fuck around. You know, I'm 25 right now. Um, I'm not scared of you. Uh, you can pull through at my house any fucking time and you can catch these fucking hands and, um, you're going to listen to what I'm saying. You're not going to like it and tough shit. And from then on, like, I haven't spoken to him over text message in about a fucking year because I just told this man off that fucking hard. So don't come from my mother. It's it's not that fucking crazy. Don't go after moms. No, no, no. What's called? As we say here many times we're big fans of single moms and what they do. Uh, it's not easy being a single mom by any reason. Mom no, Lisa was in here in the chat earlier, who I know is likely gone to sleep now. Um, <laughs> my mom, and she is a single mom who raised me. Um, and and man, she done some work. And I mean, my my dad is in the picture, but by all means, don't get me wrong. Um, but my my very much, um, I would say, compassionate side. I learned a lot from both my parents, but I will say my compassionate side and kind of empathy side came from my mom. Um, I learned kind of how to be assertive and tough kind of love with my dad. I mean, combined, they did they did some good work. <laughs> um, yeah. work though, but I, I will say is, is um, my mom is my person, whichever way you spin it, whether you, yeah. whether, whether you want, whether you like it or not, is my, that, is, that is my person more than anything. And, um and mama's boy totally would be the best way to sum, sum it up and and, and, totally. here, and so yeah no i i can totally relate with that is, is you can you can fuck around with me and make jokes about me but like when it comes to family and shit like that that's where you, that's where the line gets drawn or even my friends too that's where the line gets drawn and um yeah you want to pull up and catch his hands that's on you <laughs> yeah i don't give a fuck who you are like i don't care if i'm about to get my ass beat like i'll still fucking fight let's go <laughs> Yeah. Um, we do have a question here from uh, Galaxy. It says, when you were down, did you try revealing it to your parents um, or friends, and or try hiding it? Um, I I have a very bad habit of trying to fucking uh, do everything on my own. And I learned in the like last seven to eight months because like that's when like my mental health was at its absolute fucking worst. Like, I'm talking from, a, like, I had a history of fucking, you know, mental illness, but, like, the last seven to eight months of all of this fucking shit really got, really got to me, mm -hmm. you know, and I really, I've, I fucking realized that you can't fucking hold it in, man. You can't, that's how you end up in a fucking, that's how you end up in the ground, man how you fucking end up in the ground like you gotta you gotta talk to your fucking friends or your fucking like whoever you feel like you can trust mm -hmm. because like for a lot of people their parents can't be fucking trusted there's a lot of like topics that i won't bring up to my mom because like i don't think she has the the facilities to really like deal with the reality of like hey mom I'm thinking about like taking all of my pills right now and just fucking going to sleep forever. You know, I don't like, there's a part of me that's just like, I don't want to fucking trauma dump on the people around me. But like at the same fucking time, dude, like you just, you gotta fucking tell someone you gotta fucking talk about it. Like it's the biggest disservice you can do for yourself. And like, on many of my fucking mushroom trips, like, I have, like, because back to that thing where I said way earlier in this, um, this whole stream, you know, the mushrooms are medicine. They tell you, 
they give you what you need, not what you fucking want. <laughs> ever. And that's why they're medicine. Mm -hmm. Like, this is where we bring in like shadow work and shit like that where we're confronting the dark parts of ourselves and like coming to terms with it accepting it and integrating it into like us as a whole mm -hmm. and like on some of these mushroom trips i have to fucking face like my darkness my like my inclination to self-sabotage my inclination to just want to be like i want to hit the fuck it button and i want out of this body right now and i want to die and if you've ever done mushrooms, there's always like this voice that isn't yours. That's if you're listening to it, you'll hear it. And I have this dialogue with the mushroom. And I remember one time they were just like, can we stop with the suicidal thing? It's not a good look for you, bro. It's really not a good look for you. And they were just like, you can do whatever you want. But just know the world is a much happier place with you in it. It's going to be a lot sadder of a place without you. Like, so to answer your question, in the past, no, I haven't gone to fucking people and I've suffered the consequences of dealing with a mental illness and not dealing with it correctly. And God, does it kick you in the fucking ball? Just fucking talk to your friends, anyone you trust, like fucking talk to them. Please, the world is a happier place with your presence in it. No matter how much you feel like that is some bullshit. Like, I don't even know you guys. I just want to say, like, if no one said it to you today, like, I love you. And I'm glad you're fucking here. And I want you to know that you're exactly where you need to be right now. And you're doing fucking wonderful. Like, just, just stay with us. Stay a little bit longer. Stick it out. It might get a little bit better. It does get better, hundred percent. You know, well, it might not. It, it might not be tomorrow, unfortunately. But let's go. But it, it, it unfortunately, it no. It may be fucking eight months from now. It might be a year from now. But god damn it, it gets fucking better. You know, don't don't turn off the movie before it's over. Like let's let's stick it out. See what happens. It might be interesting. Well, there we go. That's the deep part <laughs> in that in that thing, and yeah, exactly. I think is if someone hasn't said you today, I love you. You are beautiful. Um, there's been a couple of TikToks that we posted up that I actually probably rolled on the thing there too. Is um, is things like that too, and I put that because I think it's someone thing that's so important is with my content. It obviously brings in a lot of people with um, that struggle with mental health in that sense, and and with that kind of um, that, that ability to kind of that in and, and talk to people that in that sense is i also have to be able to that is a responsibility of mine in the sense to also remind people that may be struggling that i mean every single day is not always easy for every single person maybe i have a good day but someone and someone that i hang out with or talk with might not be having that day it might be the day that's really shit for them um and i've had some of my own where it's it's terrible and there's there's some days where it just well they're what maybe not like severe severe but especially in the last little while with content creation is it is taxing mentally. Um, and every streamer that I have talked to or even creator that I've talked to on this podcast, whether it be on stream or off stream, have said very similar stories of that. They are like mentally tired and it's because it's things like this is taxing. It's a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world, but it is very, very tiring mentally. At the end of the thing, you're like, okay, what do I have to do? get the next step what do i want to do to achieve this next success of mine um, whether it be releasing a song like you're like you said or recording an album or um being on a tiktok or anything like that and yeah thank god i have such a good mod team you're darn right donovan uh because i don't think i would i would be it's probably still doing um these as consistently and, and being able to kind of pull everything together in a sense like a good example of this today i this this episode would not be happening today had i not had a good team around me um, it's like you said earlier, it's, it's having those people around you and being blunt and open with them. Um, and, and the, the call this, this afternoon that started with when I found out that I had, um, that our guest had the flu and could not make it the word for word that I said to the team was, I am spiraling. I need your help because I cannot clearly think right now. Um, and we need a guest and we have about an hour and it, it happened. <laughs> um, I'm here. So, yeah, exactly, right. And and damn, we not like we cheaped out on a on a on a shitty guest either. We got a we got a, we got a good one today too. 
Um, and we're darn lucky about that. Um, however, we are getting to the end of our podcast. However, I have one question that I asked every single one of my guests, and you, my friend, are no different. Um, and that question is, if your life was a movie, what would the title be and why? Um, fuck around and find out. Fuck around and find out. All right, I like it. And it contains your fr- favorite word from what I've heard, too. Yeah, <laughs> fuck is my favorite word. It's a great word. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> It can be used in so many different ways, but fuck around and find out is really what it is. Because like that phrase can it can be confrontational, or it can be very warm and welcoming, and mm. just like, what you're having a bad day, you want to chill, fuck around and find out if we can have a better day. Like, plain and fucking simple. Yeah. You know? Really, really like that. I, that's really what my life has been about is just fucking around and finding out. Sometimes it works out in my favor and sometimes I crash and burn spectacularly. Can't, can't have it every single day. It's not how it works. Unfortunately nope. it's, but nope. I think is fuck around and find out perfectly said. Um, well, I want to thank you, Joey. This last little part is going to be a openness to you. I'd love to give this open to you is to shout out anything you'd like to do, say anything you'd like to for the few minutes while I go and find us or someone to raid. Um, so please, the floor is yours, my friend. Oh, okay. Well, um, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I just, maybe I just want to reiterate what I said before about the whole mental health thing. Like, just like the whole, like, if I had three things that I could have, like, and they were all fucking, like, materialistic. Like, it's all about the homies. At the end of the day, it's all about the homies. It's all about you. Like, check in on your homies. Check in, on, check in with your fucking self. Like, do you need water? Have you eaten? I know you haven't fucking eaten. You <laughs> I know. As soon as the stream ends, I'm going to run to the kitchen and grab the honey garlic chicken in the, in the fridge. For sure. Um, but, um, like, check in with your body. Check in with yourself. Check in with your fucking homies. Um, you're exactly where you need to be. You're doing wonderful. Um, Hold space for the idea that things can exceed your expectations beyond your wildest fucking dreams. And hold space for the fact that, like, you're here right now. You survived 2020. Pat yourself on the fucking back. I didn't think I was going to make it. All right? So I can only imagine what it was like for everyone fucking else, man. Like, and I had a plethora of fucking friends. I had places to go. I have people that fucking, like, I have a support system, and I almost didn't fucking make it through this year. So pat yourselves on the fucking back. You are doing amazing. And if you don't know where you're going right now, that's okay, because it means you're doing something fucking different you haven't done before, and that's a good sign. That's a really good fucking sign. You're on the right track. Keep going. I I think that's all I have for the people. Like, love yourself, love the people around you. What more could you ask for? Sure. And well, I'm going to hit one more time the guest command there. Go follow Joey if you haven't already on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, Instagram, the DMs is the best place to um, inquire about getting a tarot reading. Any other questions? Or just any general questions too. Like, we can just chat. Like, I'm open to new friends. And don't be weirded out if I don't answer instantly. I'll either pass out after this shit or I'm going to be on TikTok and my ADHD just makes me fucking like, so please don't take offense if I don't instantly answer. I promise I will get to you whenever I have the mental faculties. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, we're going to roll into a raid here. Um, we have a, um, uh, a, a friend who has actually been on my TikTok before, uh, but I haven't been able to reach out too much with. I mean, I'd love to uh, pick her mind on the stream. Uh, Scoots McDoots, also known as, known as Scooter. Um, so if you guys can, go spread love. Thank you so much to all of you guys for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you to you, uh, Joey, for coming in last minute clutch and, and coming Thank in you and hanging out with us. For sure. Thank you for listening to my wacky stories. <laughs> no, it's been a, so much fun. And, and everyone's saying that they, they love you in chat too. And, and I agree. I, I love your vibe. I love your energy. 
Um, Hi, chat. I love you too. Um, I haven't been watching on the Twitch thing because my internet service is kind of garbage here. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, go and go and check out some of the Discord there. Um, we'll we'll talk about it. I'll I'll, I'll teach you the Discord things after. So don't worry. Let's go. But you, we'll we'll take you over the sofa after, and you can say what's up to everyone, um, and say hi in the Discord as well. Um, but like I said, thank you so much to everyone who's been here. Thank you to Joey. Uh, if you guys haven't already, sign up for that the tournament, exclamation mark, attorney. We'll give you the link for that. Um, and we will see you guys in the Discord later. And I will see you, if not, well, we'll see you in the Discord for sure. But I will see you also on next Tuesday when we are meeting with um, Dubligity on the podcast. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you all. Goodbye. Peace out.